Everything's recording. Yeah, we're good. Here we go. Three, two, one. At this rate, my goddess is going to be forced to become some other man. She will be defiled. Hello and welcome to Core. This is Core talking video games from the dumb thing I played this week all the way up to some big, huge goings on in the world uh, of the industry of video games. And that's why you come to listen to Core. This is episode 355 and it is Friday, March 3rd, 2023. Two things. First, John, you kind of had the place to yourself for a few days. That's why we didn't have yeah. a show yesterday, by the way, everybody. It's just a little schedule flop for the week. Uh, how did that? How did that feel? Did you did you did you go? Oh man, I forgot what bachelorhood feels like. This is pretty good. No, or, no let me tell you, having three kids to take care of did not feel like bachelorhood. Oh, uh, that's it right. Felt like quite the opposite of bachelorhood. Yeah, if it had been house to myself, we would have done maybe multiple shows. I would have been like, hey guys, I got free time on my hands. What if we recorded a couple episodes? Why not? This was the this was the opposite. This mm. was like just praying everybody would go to sleep <laughs> and live throughout the the few days yeah, until just, your wife gets back. Everybody safely go to bed. That's yeah. that's what I I wanted for most of it. But uh, yeah, we watched Shrek. Oh, and Shrek too. Oh, oh my gosh! How John do hates up? he hates Shrek. Well, you don't hate Shrek. You hate the I memes hate around Shrek. Shrek. Memes, yeah, I hate but... Shrek memes. That's right. You know what? I was reminded how much fun the Shrek movies are. They're a good time. They're pretty good. Yeah. You know what? Three's They're bad. Pretty good. Three's bad. Um, I also it was on the back of watching that new uh, Puss in Boots: The Last Wish movie, which I loved. It's supposed to be great. So can't wait. So uh, with the exception of a song from it, got stuck in my head real bad because the baby likes it. So I've I've watched that movie like six times now. Yeah. <laughs> um, not only the first time, but I saw it five more times after that. Uh, and so the song is stuck in my head. But beyond that, uh, that movie is, it doesn't need to go so hard on the action scenes, but it does. And I really appreciate it for it. The hype is real on that movie. Yep. Okay. So that was number one. Uh, number two, have either of you ever had to have a conversation with an angry Destiny player? No, because I've always been the angry Destiny player. <laughs> well, up till now, you may have been the angriest I've dealt with, because your whole thing was like, I've bought this game again somehow, and uh, I don't yeah. know why, and all we, that. We've had that conversation a lot. <laughs> we have. I mean, Bo, have you ever had a run-in with anyone that would, you'd consider to be like hardcore Destiny 1 or 2 fan? No, not really. I mean, I've played some Destiny 2. Yeah. I have too. Yeah, I enjoy. I don't, it. I don't. I don't. I don't remember being on voice chat or comms with anyone playing that. I game. didn't think they did anything other than play Destiny. Like I thought that's why it was safe to talk about it on the show. Well, because they're too busy playing Destiny one and two to even like write in and have an opinion. You'd think. Um, I had the misfortune of bumping into a hardcore, uh, very angry Destiny fan. Oh, and you do to I make them angry, Scott. Well, here's why they're they're review bombing the Steam reviews for it, and they're doing it not because of the game itself, but there's something that happened in the story that they're upset about. Oh, okay. The, One of those the deals. Destiny lore. Yeah, Destiny. The the deep deep. De see, even me saying this is going to get me in trouble. But the well, I guess it's deeper than well, I think. Well, let me deflect that. Destiny story sucks. Oh yeah, <laughs> baby. Yeah, you it's know so bad. I, I yeah. think that like. I don't care how into Destiny you are. I think even they said how important their lore was when in the first game you had to go to the website to read about the things you were discovering. Yeah. Like yeah, that weird. says it all. It yeah. was it was bad. It was garbage. And mm -hmm. maybe it got a little better in two where the story was actually in the game. That's nice. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that you can still make a case that like, no, it's very important. You had to go to the website and read about it, but yeah. it was important. Damn yeah, it. but there like, were people who thought it was real. I mean, there were people who were like, "If you don't understand this, I can't. I can't even live on the same planet as you." And I never really understood that anger until I ran into this random Twitter user. Uh, I dared to make the comment that uh, I one of my least favorite things about gaming culture is when people usually gang up about. Usually, it's like a social or political thing, and then they just review bomb something which has nothing to do with the game. I think it's worth having discussions about. 
but it's just a waste of everyone's time to review bomb based on this one little aspect or whatever. That's all I said in a nutshell. Yeah. And this guy, you don't know. You don't know what they've done. And I'm like, I know I don't know what they've done. I, I can look into it. No, you don't understand. Something, 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 just freaking out. And then I got accused of being, uh, t- what was the, uh, of oh, having. Oh, you cashed that check from Bungie, Scott? No, no. <laughs> I, got, I got accused of toxic positivity is what I got accused yeah. of. Toxic positivity. Yeah. Yeah, in relation to that discussion, and I was like, I'm, oh, pardon, I'm sorry, bro. What? Seriously, that's, that's, <laughs> that's not toxic positivity. No, not even close. I know there's a thing like if you're, it sounds like a horror movie, but you're in a house and your mother's like, smiles, everyone. Let's pretend nothing's wrong, even though everything's wrong. But we're gonna pretend like it isn't. And if you act like it's not, I'm gonna smack you and throw you in a, a dungeon. Like, there's such a thing as toxic positivity. I think the world's got a lot more problems with toxic negative ne- negativity. However, um, I'm not that guy, so I don't know why I got called this and why I had this run-in. It was like, dude, I don't know a thing about this. The, you, Destiny, I, I guess what I'm saying, my takeaway is, and I'm trying not to blanket an entire fandom here, but they seem yeah, crazy right. about like their Destiny game. people, right? Yeah. Destiny well, people I mean, seem sort crazy. Of, uh, if you, look, if you look at Destiny and, like, two and, and think... I have an expectation that the story will get better. Like, uh, it's a hard lesson to learn. If you refuse to learn it, like, I can see that coming. It's, why it's one of the reasons I stopped playing. Yeah. Not that I need a story to play a video game necessarily, if it's fun. And it, it kept me hooked for a good little while. Mm-hmm. But, like, I am I am so... If someone, if people are like, why is the story of the next expansion so bad? I'm like, I am so not shocked. I see what they've been working with. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, it's not... Yeah. If that's a, if that's so important to if story is so important to you, you've picked the wrong franchise, the wrong game, the wrong area to mine for that. In my opinion. Yeah, I don't know what they thought I'm they were going to do for a, for a, a regular update slash expansion if they were going to solve all their all their issues. And I understand being upset, but I thought the point of that game, and I think Bungie thinks the point of the game is to grind for gear and keep going. And, it's, and to and, give them sixty dollars every time, and to get sixty bucks from John out. every time that they can. <laughs> yep. I mean, that's probably um, why sixty I'm into dollars the, as you can possibly get. Yeah, exactly. I think that's probably why I'm into the Borderlands franchise because you know it's very obvious they're not trying that hard. <laughs> <laughs> no one's under any illusions over in the Gearbox camp of what they're playing. It's you know, it's, yeah, it's there to you know for candy and to be fun and yeah, like let's play along with it. But you know. At least I'm tiny just tiny what they good. did with Lilith in this new game. As yeah. a uh, oh. as a Final Fantasy XIV fan, I'm annoyed at the improper use of toxic positivity. Mm. I know what toxic positivity is. I'm mm. part of that community. Mm. I know what it is. That's not what Scott was doing. No. Toxic positivity is when you're like, this game is so great that if you buy a skip, we will kill you. <laughs> That's toxic Yeah, while positivity. they smile. <laughs> While yeah. they smile. Sorry. Side review. Watch the movie Smile. It scared the shit out of me. Watch it. Oh, yeah? 2022 was the great year for horror movies. Not video game related at all. I just want to throw it out there. And let, let that ball loose. I mean, I watched that. we have a horror movie related news item. I, that's true. I watched this on a fluke. One of the best horror movies I've seen in years. <laughs> what, on a fluke? What You thought you were watching a movie about Dennis or something? I thought it was going to be goofy, because <laughs> I saw Megan, and it was goofy and fun. Yeah. Megan's really good, but for different reasons. It's not that scary. It's just kind of a romp. It's a good time. It's like watching... It's like the first time you saw Gremlins. You had a great time. That's what Megan is. It's really Three fun. Dead. Highly Two. recommend it. But Smile, I went into thinking I was going to get something goofy and campy. No. That thing left a mark on me, man. That thing is... Woo! <laughs> I recommend it, but it's scary. Just know that going in. All right. Show me on the VCR where it touches. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you after the show. Wow, VCR. Yeah, the VCR. Remember those? I remember those. That's where he watched it for sure. That's right. Let's get to our big story of the week. We talked about it last week, but there have been some movement on the EU and the approval uh, or trying to get the approval of the Microsoft ABK acquisition. Uh, it turns out the deals with Nintendo and NVIDIA helped. It's looking like it's probably going to happen. Although there was a delay about 20 hours ago with no de- uh, no description as to why they delayed. But it, most people, it's easy to get conspiratorial, but most people are like, yeah, it's a process. Courts are slow. Stuff comes up. Somebody, you know, who, who knows? They're also now demanding that Sony show. This is, 
This is where I think things get interesting. They're demanding show, Sony show all the deals and data related to any third-party exclusives or any contracts with third parties that they currently have going. Because their whole argument so far has been, this isn't fair. They have too many cool third-party things. Now they control it. You know, and, and they're taking them away from us. We used to have access to those third parties, and now they're going to do that, even though Microsoft says, we're not going to take it if you just, you know, we'll do the 10-year deal. And they just keep saying, no, we this is terrible. This is criminal what you're doing. And then people have been, you know, pointing out, well, Sony, including the lawyers on Microsoft's side, you guys have a ton of exclusivity. In fact, you have some that's a little murky. You haven't told anyone how it works. We don't know about your deal with Kojima. We don't know about your deal with Square Enix and with Final Fantasy. Do you yeah. want to cough those details up? So right now they're actually, the court is asking for that from Sony. <laughs> it's really the equivalent of like when one kid goes to rat out a sibling and they're like, so-and-so didn't clean their room. And you go, all right, let me see both your rooms. And like, you want to see my room too? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's just all of a sudden <laughs> you, you made a stink and you got the eye upon you. And now, uh, now you have to deal with the ramifications on both fronts. And uh, yeah. it's, it's like guys here's the thing yeah. it's a bunch of rich people fighting yeah and you may have an outcome that you want but at the end of the day like we get to just sit back and just eat the popcorn on this one so just enjoy it for how wacky and dumb it is mm -hmm. like it's it's dumb it is dumb it, it's dumb stuff you might have an outcome you want like if you're really invested in the console wars hardcore i'm sure you're on there every day talking about why so and so is a bad person and trying to ruin all video games but this is going to happen one way or another you might as well just enjoy the circus while it's while it's going yeah there's some entertainment to be had i think Especially with everyone's into the metaverse, what they should do is also sign a deal with Oculus or Meta. Oh, you like that? Call of Duty on their platform too. Oh, look at this! <laughs> Ten years. And then, then all you gotta say is metaverse, and everyone's like, "Ooh, metaverse." Okay, yeah. Microsoft, here you go. Although I feel like that term may have lost a little steam lately. I don't know. Oh, it's it's we know it's gobbledygook for those of us in the know since its inception, but the mainstream right. still think, "Hey, are you you're doing stuff in that metaverse there, eh? Yeah. How's it going?" They're like they're like Square Enix with NFTs. They just won't let go. I get it. That's yeah, a thing. They, they don't. Why Here, are we losing money? <laughs> here's the funny <laughs> here's the funny thing though. I was just thinking about this last week. Um Meta their their reality labs lost something like, I don't know what it was, 13 billion in just sunken costs in the in the meta side of things and a huge portion of that is them trying to build out what they quote unquote think is a bunch of floating torso metaverse kind of projects and that's a huge part of it and watching bo last week do his ned trip through the freaking modern art museum reminded me that i think two people made vr chat or something like that and that platform quote unquote is already more metaverse, more successful, more populated, and didn't lose thirteen billion dollars to do it than their thing is at all. Like, period. They don't have a they don't have a audience in that thing. They try, but there's nobody in there really. VR chat is exploding, and it's stupid as hell. Don't get me wrong, it is, but it's the most metaverse we have. And it took two guys and not a giant corporation with Mark Zuckerberg in charge. That's what that I've done. always said. It's not going to be a corporation that does it. Not to start, because they come in with too much of an agenda, and people see through it, and people don't want it. Like, it's a bunch of people trying to race and plant a flag and claim ownership when what really attracts people, just like with the internet, is the Wild West. Yeah. You get a bunch of people on board while it's the Wild West, and it's wacky and crazy, and then slowly you start to build your structure around it, and then that's when you do get corporate giants that grow out of it but yeah. very rarely i think are there historical cases where some company went we're gonna be the they're already big and they're like we're gonna be the pioneers here and successfully do it yeah. it doesn't happen very often nope pretty rare so we'll see what happens with all of this my guess is it goes through microsoft will soon own activision blizzard king do not get Super excited that you might have a free version of Diablo 4 to play on Game Pass just yet. <laughs> no, that's uh, going to come out first. That'll, yeah, that'll, <laughs> that's going to come out and seed itself for a long time, even if Microsoft's thing does go through this summer. And then maybe next year you'll start hearing rumors of that, is my, yeah. my guess. 
So we'll see what happens. Either of you buy, you guys are doing the beta, the, the level 20, uh, get a get a goat in your backpack beta thing. It's a wolf. Wolf, sorry, it's not a goat. It's a wolf. It's not a goat. I think I want it, though. He's cute back I there. do want it. It's cute, and it annoys me that I want it. Like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, how adorable. I want that. And then I go, please. <laughs> Did you want that included in the... Uh, special editions as well like hey guys what if it included a code for a cool backpack i don't know where i'm at with it i just like i so there is going to be an open beta you don't actually have to pre-order you get more time in the in the beta you get early yeah. access i believe right but I, I do think at some point it does open to everybody and you'll have your shot to hit level 20 or whatever it is to get your your wolf back yeah. uh it's basically it, it, payment it's like, for doing the work to get to 20 that will be wiped when the game launches because you're not keeping yeah. that pr progress. So. I mean, that's fine. I've had so many seasonal characters wiping is uh, second nature. <laughs> yeah. Diablo at this point. So, it's yeah. the only place I don't, I don't feel wipe. I don't feel a way about it. I'm like, yeah, it's fine. <laughs> no wiping in the lake, but he'll wipe, he'll wipe those characters front to back, <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, season's so, over. Let's wipe this away. Well, let me ask you this. So um, of, a, of the three of us, have any of us dived into a pre-order i have not uh pre not yet, yet but it, this is enticing it's just because it's content for the show and for the stream yeah same so i i think i'll probably... i say that it's just for content for the show and for the stream but it's really because i don't like waiting for things i well here's I'm the excited. problem though. we've been waiting for like how long, a decade like it's yeah. been a while I'm, yeah it's I'm, been I'm, a decade be hard and a year away. yeah 13 uh sorry 11 years since the but since uh, Diablo, that's a too. long time. Yeah. I did play some Diablo three. It's not on my list of things because I don't really have anything to say about it. But I did play some Diablo three this week. So did uh, I, I yeah. played a season. ton. And I did. I was I was oh. incredibly reminded of how old that game is. The second I looked at it, I was like, "Oh my god, this it's game!" It's that is old. Uh, it's that GTA San Andreas meme. Oh shit, here we go again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I said this on the Diablo show. I got in. I found the. I figured out how it worked to get the altar, which you can't do. I on don't know how to do that. That's why I didn't play very much. I maxed out I went, the altar. I you went and got okay. Kanai's cube, and I was like, I remembered how to get the cube, but I don't remember what else to do. Well, you can do read. that. You can do that thing real early, and you, but you have to do it with a brand new seasonal character. It can't be uh, an existing character, which I had learned the hard way about that. Yeah. Um, but once you once I got it, and I was like that far, I looked at the game and went. Am I really gonna do this? Am I gonna? It's quick. Well, I had a level it... seventy in one evening, and then uh, next evening I was already grinding a, you know, torment sixteen. My biggest <gasps> issue is that I've played so much. That's of what all I'm saying. The classes yeah. that I like playing. Yeah. That it 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 feels like. All right, I unlocked this ability again. I I like this one. I'll lock this one in. Like it's just <laughs> it's such familiar territory. Like it is. It is the woods with a path. Well, it's, it's, it's one last. It's one last hurrah before we move on to Diablo Four. It really, like, I got through the content super quick. Like, it, if anything, this is the most power level you get from the season benefits if mm -hmm. you unlock them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I gotta you know, unlock them. I guess is the big. Yeah, thing. but you know, there's, it, it, you know, th it comes back. You're like, oh, I had to go get it. The hardest thing was getting a staff of hurting because I had to farm damn Chiltara, freaking Act Three stupid caverns of frost if icefall cave spawns you don't get it you have to get caverns of frost if caverns of frost is there you go to the second floor maybe chiltara is down there if chiltara is an elite mob five percent drop rate yeah so it's i think RNG i reloaded like RNG 80 times yeah RNG. that was like yeah that was about 80 reloads for me to get that but that was the most painful thing out of everything i had to do it's also the stupidest um, name in the entire history of diablo chiltara, chiltara? i freaking chiltara. hate it yeah. I mean, there's a lot of mobs. You got to give everything. You a know, name. old Chill Tara, back when he was married to to, to Larry Cold Cold Man, uh, they they had a real chilly relationship. Like it's all this snow reference. I freaking hate that. But anyway, anyway, so it's real Mortal Kombat name energy. You yeah. know, in, in a universe where they have a character <laughs> named Sub Zero and Frost. Yeah, it's smoke. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> smoke anyway it's a lot easier like once the powers get into place you just become like super powered i have raid difficulty 110 on farm at this point oh my lord okay pushing 118 or 119 it only goes as high as 150 yeah which i think i'm probably gonna stop because i put a week into it i want to move on with 
my life. I filled the altar of rights and I don't need to, I'm not racing on the leaderboard. So, mm. but it's a nice little send off. And yes, you're right, John. Right. You're like, man, the polygons in this game look a little, look a little crisp. <laughs> a little, little sharp. Yeah. <laughs> it's a real lack of anti aliasing mm-hmm. going on around here. In yeah. Don't zoom in. Don't zoom in. Whatever you do. Yeah. Cause... You go to pull out your companion pet and you're like, oh my gosh, there's even fewer polygons here. It's mm-hmm. like playing Ape Escape when I pull out my minions <laughs> here. Yeah. Oh, shit. Uh, Ape Escape is a hard, is a, is a, is a deep cut and also a hard cut, man. That you just... I loved Ape Escape, man. That game was great. But those I've little minions, they were like made of three polygons. They were horrendous. <laughs> if you're, if that, I don't even know if it was even that Ape good. Escape was a game that was basically made to sell people on the idea of having two thumbsticks on a controller. Mm. Um, you know, back when that was a concept you had to sell people on instead of just an expected feature. So they made a game where literally every mechanic involved now use both thumbsticks for this. Um, and, yeah. uh, you know, it was a fun game. You caught, you caught apes. Yeah, they were great. I wish Sony would revive the Ape Escape uh, franchise. They've never well, touched it Well, they don't have since. any controllers they need to sell you. Now well, it's, that's true. Now it's all about that robot. I did play that game. That it's pretty game cool. Great. Fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's super they should cool. Make, they should make Ape Escape, but with Last of Us level graphics. Yeah. <laughs> and tone and the whole thing and hardcore. Yeah. Yeah, they yeah. did do an Ape Escape mode in Metal Gear Solid Three. Did they really? So you, yeah, yeah. We had to go around a snake and capture apes. Oh well, they're and about. They were to, the Ape Escape apes. They're about to do a remake of that game. The rumor is Konami's got a remake to show at E3. Maybe they'll put that in there. All high resolution Ape Escape catching. You know? Oh, great. Ape Escape remake or re-ape? Re-ape. <laughs> yeah. Re-ape. re-ape. <laughs> That's a problematic word, re-ape. <laughs> oh, re-ape? Yeah, don't do re-ape. Yeah. <laughs> but it's re, like, as in remake, it's a pun on remake, right? Yeah, re-ape. Re-ape. Re-aped edition. Just don't do <laughs> yeah. r.ape. Don't do that. That'd be bad. Right. That's what I mean. It's problematic, so it probably wouldn't pass muster. Yeah. 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 Well, I, Ape Escape remake would be great. It would be great. Uh, we'll talk more about Bo's time in Diablo 3 coming up here uh, soon. But now it's time for this. It's time for a patron to ask us a question. Rowan stepped up and says, what was the first game you were good at? And he put good at in quotes. <laughs> you know, According to who? <laughs> yeah, this is a problem. There's a real context uh, thing going on here. But um, I think it's a fun question, so I'm going to try to uh, answer it. But let's go around the horn here. John, do you have a game where you're like, it's the it's when I knew I could game. Like you know, your whole life was laid before you at that moment. Nice, nice question. I think uh-huh. the yeah. first game where I really felt like a strong sense of accomplishment was um, was probably Mist mm. because I remember everybody saying how hard that game was, and I beat it as a kid, and I was really proud of that fact because so many people were like, I I can never beat it. I can never beat it. You know, it's a real hard game. And here I was, some dumb kid that managed to get through it. So that was one that I felt um, I felt strongly about. Uh, and it, it really kind of changed the way I thought about games and thought about puzzles critically. So I think missed for me. That's a good answer. Bo, do you have a game where you're like, that's the one? Planet Side. Oh, shit. That's the, that's the first time I played a game, quote, professionally. Obviously, I didn't earn money at it, but... I'd lead 30 man squads. I would, we would do a lot of cavern stuff. I was an outfit leader. I never really had an idea in an MMO or I never really thought about being at a good, good at a game in a very meaningful way that meant something until that game where I was, I think a presence in global chat. Yeah. You know, people would log in, they'd know me. I'd get compliments from people be like, Oh, I want to hang out with you. Cause you're good at the game. Can I join your guild? You know? And, and then I go in and I'd be like, this is how you kill people. And bow down, you know, like, like a veteran soldier, yeah. like, uh, Pedro Pascal showing Ellie how to shoot a gun, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> sure. And, uh, it's, you know, that's what I was like, man, I'm good at this game. I'm a no lifer and plan. I, you know, if I could move, just move into the cyberspace universe and live somewhere, I'd live in that. Very simple polygon world of Araxis. Dude, that was such a cool game. All right, I, that's I a good, good one. That game. And I think it translated to Heroes of the Storm and later, you know, in our yeah, in yeah. That era. You got a little thread you can follow there, I'm sure. Um, in my case, I could go back to like sophomore in high school when I I beat 
uh, a game called Crazy Climber, and I got such a high score that I won a digital watch from Timex because I won. Oh, shit. I beat the I beat the highest score, and I think that's the first time I had a sense of like, oh, I'm better than any of these other three letter initial names on this board, and that was like a moment like that. But the feeling of like. I'm really good at a game where other people are actively competing at the same time I'm competing. That was probably Doom 1. And the reason for that is we had it in our office and we would play Deathmatch every night after work, way too late. And um, I destroyed fools. I was the best there was in that in that office anyway. And there were a bunch of nerds in there who were pretty good at these things and, and there shouldn't have been any reason why I was dominating, but I kicked people's a-holes in Doom. And it, and it gave me an inflated sense of accomplishment that I could not live up to today. Like, put me in front of today, one of today's shooters and say, all right, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 2, Scott, here you go. It's you versus those same people in that office. I don't think I'd hold up. I don't think I could do it as well as I did then. So for yeah, whatever from reason. competitive uh, sense, it would have been probably Halo for me. Yeah. Because I was the first friend that I knew um, – that discovered how broken and it's common knowledge now, but how broken the pistol in the original halo was. Yeah. Um, I knew that none of my friends knew that. And I got accused of cheating all the time. Um, Damn. because I, I would just, it seemingly instantly kill them. And how did you do that? You, that was with a pistol. What, what are you doing? How did you do it? And I, so, um, I was on the cutting edge there. Also, there was a time, I, I think I have mentioned this on the show before, but, um, when I was in high school, our computer lab, uh, our, our computer teacher told us, uh, because we were sophomores that as long as we kept it hidden from the freshmen, um, we could install counter-strike on all the computers oh, and we man. would play counter-strike all lunch period long every day. And I got really good at counter-strike as a result and when I would go home and play, I would get booted from servers for cheating, despite not cheating, <laughs> because I had so much practice at the game. Yeah. Um, they would just go, you're, you're clearly, you have to be doing something. You're out of this server, and they'd boot me. You'd be one um, of those people, one of those streamers today that has to get on and do like big, long explanation videos on YouTube to say why they're not cheating because they get accused of yeah. it so much. That's well, you. there was a gun called the Bullpup or something like that. I Bullpup one of those guns that had like a mid range zoom. Like it wasn't a big sniper rifle, but you could, it was like aiming down sights before aiming down sights was a thing. Yeah. Um, and I would walk around with that turned on and I would be way more accurate than most people that were trying to shoot from the hip. And it was all about accuracy. Like this is the early days of counter-strike where that was a deep level strategy. Nowadays, if I try to play, I die in seconds. Like yeah. I spawn and I go, Oh, I remember. And then I'm dead. Yeah. Um, skills did not last and hold up. I'm terrible at Counter Strike now, but there was a time where I was extremely good at it. Yeah, I had some good Counter Strike years, good Unreal Tournament years. Like there was a time PC shooters and I were like in sync all the time, and now I think I'm just not. I just lost my touch. I don't know. I used to be really quick on that <laughs> stuff. I'm yeah. just not good at it anymore. But man, those were good times. Bo, did we already do? Yeah, we did. You, I did last. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> I made it all about com com competition. No, yeah, you were all about. You I were was about... good at Miss, and I was like, I owned everyone in Planet Side. <laughs> True, but you were also that's the most co-op of our answers. You 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 had to coordinate and work with thirty people to get shit done. And I don't know, there's something about I'm, that skill. It, yeah, it, I'm nostalgic for that. I know there's a Planet Side too. It's just not the same. Yeah, they didn't. I'm nostalgic for that era. And the game's gone. Could they do something to that game to make it what you There's want? There's a private server out there. Oh. I haven't, I've just been a little concerned. I don't, you never know what you're getting into on these private discords and stuff like that. It's a small community. Yeah. I'm not sure I want that smoke. But is there something they could do to two that you would be like, oh, shit, they've done it. They made the game I wanted. Or is it not? No, it's no? Call of duty -fied. They, you know, it, it's a tribes kind of shooter, not a Call of Duty shooter. And they went too hard on the Call of Duty. Yeah. It's it. it's it's got to retain some of that RPG and some of that friction. It's you, Call of Duty's like oh you got headshot out of nowhere. There needs to be a little more more to it. I, they just didn't quite nail it honestly, and the graphics look kind of but. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I I I guess I haven't. Seen I played it. a lot of hours of it. I enjoyed it, but I fell off. It just didn't have the same magic. Yeah, I don't. I I think I think one of the things they looked at 
as um, a problem was actually a feature, which is those large base battles. That was you know, just the, the best way part. The like some of the bases, they were really hard to dig out. But I don't know. There's just a magic sauce. It might also be just a product of its era too. Mm. It was much more of a novelty to have an online shooter with, you know, 300 players a server. At the office I worked at, we all rushed out and got upgrades to video cards on the company's dime because oh. that came out, and we were like a little behind <laughs> we need this for work we need it for work so, <laughs> we need to optimize so these are like early geforce cards i think and like geforce 256s or maybe they're a little more uh, geforce ones or something anyway those just never, yeah, and that's sorry. what they were for was for that game <laughs> was to go that's back awesome. and play that yeah i don't i think it's a shame you never stuck around because i would say i've never had a stronger sense of community experience of community that's not to say other games don't have it than i did in that game mm. Because it didn't matter if you were in an outfit with people. I find that's like not the case in the current iteration of Planet Side. Mm. Like the guilds would know each other. Right. I was just, you know, like Knights of the Old Republic, they were a fast response for defense. Yeah. Uh, the Enclave is a bunch of racists, um, but there's a <laughs> lot of them. <laughs> and they, 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 they do their thing. Uh, there was one, I can't remember the name so of the wait, other one. So were the people racists outfit. that played the characters or were these, was it yeah, just Yeah, I was in the Enclave for a short little while. And okay. It was, yeah, it was, it was bad. Okay. Um, I, I left, formed my own guild full of peaceful cavern dwellers. We were cave specialists. <laughs> wow. Cavern dwellers. Wow. The cat Because core combat was the expansion pack that introduced caves and caves <laughs> provided lattice benefits to the surface. Yeah. But not everyone liked the cave, so we made it our speciality. As soon as someone would attack down there, it was more guerrilla warfare with zip lines and sci-fi shit. But, you know, and then sometimes we'd call out, like, you're about to lose your lattice link, open up exposure back on Amorish or Forceral to be exposed for invasion. We need a rapid defense. So the TRX, which is Knights of the Republic, would often respond quickly. But we were down there. And um, then we come up to the surface and do shit too. And because when you're on global comms, you're kind of a celebrity in the space because not everyone had CR5. So you'd be able to communicate to the entire server on your empire. But oh, they could, right. you know, not everyone could do it. So you'd be like, we need our forces here. You'd have command chat so you, people weren't cross talking. We'd decide, you know, the outfit leaders would decide on tactical goals together or inform what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Like there was just a sense of like, I knew all the names of the people on the server. Like every day, people would log in, and I would know. I never met Praetor SPQ, SQPR, but I remember him. I remember Night Train 2020. Man, I remember. You all got uh, way T more Pop organized Pop. after I stopped playing Planet Side. <laughs> none of that was going on when I was playing. But I, I was I think playing it's... before the caves. Like I was out before the cave expansion. In fact, I, I think it, the yeah, cave expansion yeah. is part of what prevented me from getting back in because. For us, it was we're going to play Planet Side until uh, Star Wars Galaxies comes out. And then Star Wars Galaxies came out. Everybody I knew left Planet Side to go play that. Everybody I knew hated Star Wars Galaxies and was like, well, maybe yeah. we should go back to Planet Side. And then they're like, here's our new expansion. We're adding caves. And everyone went, oh, that sounds stupid. And nobody went back. Weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. Oh, the caves were awesome, and the cavern weapons are great. Like, we were hipsters about it. There was a lot of sentiment like that, but, you know, you can make something cool by making it seem awesome. And, like, as I think I think the initial influx of people were there, so only the lifers remained. And it was a deep and, uh, and tactical enough game, with endless hours of constant battle and, and working with other players. I got a lot out of it. I spent, like, a solid six years of my game. It's all I did, like, the same way as Heroes, just played... Planet side, there were, when I got my CR5, I played for nine days straight from waking up till bed for nine days. All I did was eat pizza pops and play planet side, <laughs> trying to get my command rank. It was very, very hard to get CR5. Rem remind you have, me, you had to be captain of a squad, yeah. And if you captured a dinky base, you got proportional XP, you got nothing. You had to capture a big battle base to get even a reasonable amount of XP. Nine days solid to go from CR4 to CR5, and I'd already had some work on it. And, wow. you know, I, during that time, I'd pick up a lot of randoms, but maybe they'd join your guild. It was an era from of my life, man. This is when I was like, man, I'm just, like, really good at this game. <laughs> you know, like, I felt like a pro. I'd walk in and be like, everyone move over Gorass here. But a lot of people felt that way. It doesn't make me unique, but, you know. Well, just... remind me, did the game, the game to use dice rolls, right, for shooting? Um, yeah, so it's uh, not hit. What do they call it? It's not hit scan. It's like um, it's dice rolls. Like yeah. you shoot, but whether you wh whether you hit within the cone of fire or not is a dice roll. Interesting. 
Yeah, I don't know that we necessarily need that aspect back. <laughs> I hope not, because yeah. man. Yeah. But it's just more the like the rock, paper, scissorness of it. Like, oh, having a hard time? Everyone get in a max suit, so let's do a max crash. Mm-hmm. Um Biolab hold, get let's get do a gen drop on top and try and hold them out. Interlink facility, notoriously the hardest bases to overcome. Let's go to their other bases and start blowing up all their turrets, draining them of their ant energy. Let's kill any ants they use to replenish the replenish the base with energy yeah. and cut off their power from the lattice that way. There's all kinds of stuff you could do. And of course the voice emotes were legendary. Meta turret. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Give me 50. Uh, yeah. Oh, fun, you can't beat me. It's a fun oh, trip. All down kinds of voice life. emotes in that game too. It was, I love it. I look love at it. look at it's beautiful. My baby is I know, right? It's aged, but my it was something. it'll always be beautiful to me. Like, we played yeah. it a lot at work, and then I don't know why I fell off. I don't remember, but I remember having a great time while we were at it. Yeah, and tons of vehicles, tanks. It was it'd be really fun when you were playing with friends and we called it the Zerg because there's people that were just single players foot zerging from base to base and you just roll up in your tank and smoke them all. It's yep. like, come on, come on, come on. Or uh, we had a vehicle called the Bang Bus, which yeah. was, it was like a van with four turrets on top of it. it oh like, my gosh. <laughs> Has a different we meaning the, as well, but sure. Yeah, that, well, that was the joke. It was yeah. called the Bang Bus. <laughs> it, the was, it went bang, 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 but really it's a sex website, but you know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny when you're, you know, when you're you know, <laughs> like, it's the bang bus. Let's go. I just pictured uh, Wolfgang, what's his name on The Simpsons, up at the doing his comedy routine and just goes, That's the joke. <laughs> Rainer Wolfcastle. <laughs> Rainer Wolfcastle, that's his name. Yeah. The Arnold Schwarzenegger of The Simpsons. Well, anyway, that's awesome. Uh, there's a bunch of video up on YouTube of old. Uh, yeah, old... You got to find some videos of some massive battles, like when the servers are about to crash. It's the best. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, all right. Well done. Now this. Time to play or talk about the games we played this week, and I'm going to start with one of these. Work harder! I played a chore core game that has been on my list for a while. A whole bunch of you at home have been telling me to play it, and I was never really sure why. I get it now. Uh, this is a game called Arcade Paradise, and this is a weird thing that I need to talk about in a certain context, because... In any other way, this would just be another chore core game. Oh, you're going to build an arcade, and then you're going to put machines in it, and then you got to maintain them and get the money out of them and keep the place clean and clean up the trash everyone leaves. And all of those are aspects to this thing. But it's more than that, and it ended up striking me like an arrow right in my childhood in a way I did not see coming, and I'll explain. So the way this game starts, you your, your dad thinks you're a deadbeat, and want you to take over, um, and this isn't the, th- that's not true of my dad. I don't want to <laughs> try to paint that picture. My dad, <laughs> okay. my dad did not think I was a deadbeat, but my dad owned a uh, a chain, not a chain, but a number of um, what do you call uh, laundry mats around town. That was a, one of his businesses for a long time. Was he ran laundry mats? So he'd go in there and collect the money out of the machines, make sure stuff was repaired, uh, keep track of everything. You know, just make sure it was always stocked up or whatever it had to be to be what it is. And this is in the eighties and it was a thing he did. And during that time, um, I would spend a lot of time on the weekends with him in his laundry mats, doing laundry mat stuff, cleaning up, taking care of stuff, you know, whatever. It was just kind of like, Hey Scott, you're working today with me on a Saturday or something. And in this game, that is literally what you're asked to do. Your dad asks you to go and help run this old ass, dirty, uh, hasn't been, you know, kept up in years looking laundromat in the middle of some city. And it's kind of a huge dump. And so were the ones my dad owned. So I was already having like just kind of a visual like, oh my gosh, this place, what the hell's going on here? Anyway, so there's a whole chore core thing going on where I'm, I'm doing loads of laundry. I'm making sure they're done in a timely manner. There are people in there spending money on on drinks and stuff. I'm collecting change from the change machine, the token machine. And as part of the story... Um, there's a back room. And when you get into that back room, you realize, oh my gosh, it's full of old arcade machines. There's like three or four of these here. There's like a sit down one. Uh, there's a, there's a couple of standups. These are all fake games in this world. So there's nothing, there's no Pac-Man or anything, but it's all, it's all mirrored after actual games of, of the eighties uh, and, and early nineties, I would argue. 
And uh, they're just back there. Hopefully this video will show him go back there in a second. Right now he's just pulling gum off of something and then doing some laundry. Everything's gamified. So pulling gum off the stuff, picking up trash, throwing the trash in the dumpster is gamified. If you hit the, the marker at the right moment, you get like a S rank. Um, and it's all told in like mm. these pixels on top of an otherwise realistic rendering of the world. Uh, it's super weird and interesting that way. Um, anyway, the the arcade machine machines, you start to notice, and it's not like super narrative or anything, but you start to notice that the arcade machines are making more money than the laundry is. And this mirrors 100% this transition my dad made back in the 80s when he ran these places, he started to bring arcade machines into these places and these machines started making more money than the, than the laundry machines did because people were hanging around and putting more quarters in them as the eighties. After all games were huge arcade games. And I, I got that. I almost got choked up. I was like, Oh my gosh, dude, this is just like, it's just, it's exactly my story of, you know, my dad and that whole era and everything. Um, so because you find out these arcade machines make more money than the laundromat does, you start to take the money you've earned doing laundry shit and the little bit of money that is flowing to the games that are in that back store for now, and you start buying new machines. And when you do that, the next day you come into work, a truck comes by and drops off the new arcade machine. And then you put that in the arcade, you set it up, now you got another source of income, and you're slowly but surely over time... Uh, you're building out as this massive arcade, and the laundromat is becoming less and less of a thing. Again, almost 100% mirroring my childhood in terms of watching what my dad was doing for business. Um, then you expand the back room and get like an ugly arcade carpet, and you can put more games in there. And I should mention, every game that you buy to fill your arcade, they all work. They're all video games. Um, they're, oh, not, wow. they're not... You know, like I said, this you're not going to play Pac-Man. See, i got some video. Here we go. Um, you're not going to play Pac-Man in this arcade, but you're going to play these other games. There's this digger game I'm going to show right now where you literally go up to the machine. It zooms up to the screen as if you're in the room, and you play this really fun, reminiscent of an old arcade game you may have played before. Like, there is a game that's a lot like Pac-Man, and uh, GTA had a baby. It's kind of hard to explain, but... Um, there's a game that's, that's, uh, Pac like a, GTA. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Um, okay. and then there's, there's one that's like, uh, match three, you know, kind of, um, what's the, uh, like bejeweled style, bejeweled. but they all have progression mechanics. So every game's got a thing where it's like, Oh, I can unlock stuff and those stay unlocked, even though that's not really realistic with an arcade machine, but you, mm. you unlock abilities in the digger game, for example, that he can dig faster or his, 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 uh, his tools are stronger. And that that will stay with you. And those games each have their own bunch of like achievements and and you know levels and just stuff you can do in each of these games. So every time you get a new game, you're super stoked because you get to go back there while laundry's going. You go in the back and you play these games. And then when one of the laundries are done or need you, your little watch on your your digital watch, which again I won playing at my dad's arcade. Like I mentioned earlier with Crazy Climber, your watch goes beep, beep, and you pull it up and it says dryer's done, and you go out and t take care of it while people are still walking around playing arcade games. It's so weird, you guys. Like, I can't even express how, like, I felt like I was being watched, <laughs> or I felt like I'd been, <laughs> oh, I had been seen with this game and in a way that I'm just not used to, and, uh, you know, it's obviously unique circumstances that, that got me here even some of these games are even multiplayer this hockey one they're showing right now is a you can actually have two of you played if you want which is a little weird but um anyway you slowly build out your arcade it gets bigger and bigger and bigger you had a jukebox it's got a bunch of fake 80s music and it. it's all really good um and you go from there and you're and your dad the whole time this is opposite of my dad but this the dad and this is just so skeptical that the arcade is the thing that's making all this money he just can't believe it and uh, you keep showing with the numbers that it's that it's better and better. So there's a little bit of story going on there, and you you access that story through a shitty old computer in the office, and uh, there's a, you know, a bunch of little details like that I, I don't need to necessarily mention. But it's a chore core game for sure. But the subject matter is just so like <laughs> right it's up in like, my face. It, it, it's in the realm of like I had this personal experience. I'm sharing this personal experience, and then it resonates with someone who's like, oh man. Yeah, I feel, I feel this. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's really odd. Um, 
Oh, this is a game I don't have yet. He's actually looking at here. What's this one called? Spacecraft Simulator. Interesting. Every game is fun. I should say that. The arcade games themselves, super fun. The game's loaded with DLC that you can buy. Um, that will that like for a buck ninety nine, you get like a oh here's a bundle of space games or here's a whatever, and I, it's an interesting way to do it. There's tons of games to unlock, but there's all these extras that they have that you can just get, and they're all reminiscent. Like this game right here feels like a mix between Outrun and Blast Super Blast or no Blast. What the hell is that called? Anyway, you're trying to pick up these coins. You're trying to, it's some futuristic racer. It plays just like an old 16 bit or arcade racer. And they're all good. Like none of them are throwaway. And it's kind of impressive that they put clones of popular styled games, you know, really going for, you know, time was spent to make sure these can all work. So. Yeah. It's really something. It's, it's actually just, I don't know. I just had this, I had this, oh, there he is with his wrist. He's like, oh, this wash is done. I got to leave. So he has to exit the game. You lose your progress on the run, but if you had a successful run, any of that progress is saved. It's mm. kind of weird. but um, So you're jumping back and forth. You're trying to run an efficient laundromat. And at the same time, this game thing is just a growing concern, and you're building it out, and you're making it bigger, and more people are coming from that for that than they are so the laundry. So doing the laundry is like mining for the Vespine gas to build. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. They gamify it, so it's kind of fun. Lots of goofy sounds. Uh, you can see the way they overlay like pixel graphics on top of realistic graphics just to give it this feeling, almost like a uh, Scott Pilgrim-y sort of approach. Um, it's in some ways very simple. At the end of the day, at 2 o'clock in the morning, you close, and so you have to leave, and you'll you'll go home, and it'll show how much money you collected, and you got to put money in a safe or else you can't spend it. always takes a day to get your next arcade machine in if you can afford it. Um, the sound's really good. The graphics are fine. It's just a rad, weird thing. It has that vibe. I don't know if you guys did this when you were a kid, but like when I had to do boring work, I'd pretend like saw video game stuff. Like mm -hmm. you throw your garbage bag in, you get 30 points, or you make like little sounds and stuff. It's kind of like, yeah, it has that feel. A little bit. Sort. Yeah. It's like this character is sort of everything's a game to him. And so he's treating yeah. it that way. I almost, almost forgot to mention, there's this thing called the Pocket Pauser 3, but it's a... It's a PDA. It's a PDA, yeah. yeah. It's like green green screened freaking Palm Pilot that is so... Rem I, I wanted I, a PDA so bad. They're I had so one of these. My mom was like, no. Yeah. I got own. one, and then I had no idea what to do with it. It was <laughs> like, I need this so bad. And yeah. then finally I got my parents to cave. And then I had no idea what to do with it once I had it. At first, it's mostly like uh, preferences, and and there's also a mini game in there called Running Llama or something, where you try to jump over obstacles as this llama and get oh, as far as you can. The, you don't have internet game. A little bit, yeah. Um, and the interface is like dead on. It's so funny to me, but the um, uh, it's also a place later on in the game, especially when you've got a fair number of arcade machines going, it's a way to manage those and see, oh, okay, this one's really popular right now, but I'm only charging a quarter. Let's bump that to 50 cents. And if the popularity goes down, you can adjust. You can charge a dollar for some games because they're just huge and in demand and uh, and so on. So it's like a, a little bit of a business management thing. It's pretty light on that end, so it's not too crazy which I'm glad of because I don't really feel like doing business management software, but um, it's cool, you guys. It's really cool. It's on sale, which is why I finally nabbed it. It's normally 20 bucks. It was on sale for like 11 right, I might have missed the name. What's it called again? Ar it's called Arcade Paradise. I got bad news. I don't think it's on sale anymore. Oh, it came off sale? Crap. Um, well, I might be wrong. Hold on. Let me go back and double check. I guess what uh, I just no, it's back to twenty. Back bucks. to twenty. Okay. Or if you buy the deluxe version, that is on sale right now. And that'll come with a bunch of ninety-eight. But that'll come come with a bunch of arcade uh, machines that you don't normally get. I think. But anyway, it is uh, a surprise in a couple of ways. Number one, it's a good game. It's actually fun. And if you like chore core games, then this is one of those, and you're going to like it. If you don't like chore core games, you probably aren't. Um, if you like the nostalgia of all this that I've been talking about, then you probably enjoy it on that level. But where I came away from it was this weird mix of this kind of gameplays up my alley, but also, holy shit, this is a mirror to my youth in very specific, in a very specific way. Freaking laundry mat. Are you kidding me? Like I almost was like incredulous when I fired it up. I'm like, what? <laughs> How dare you? I like, are you kidding? It was so specific. It felt, 
it felt unreasonably almost supernatural the way the way it, the way I was presented with these these concepts that I that I know personally and in, and in such a personal way. Apparently, so, the is father wild. is done by Doug Cockle. Oh, who's that? He does voice. There's a voice for Victor Vran and the Witcher series. Oh, really? Well, that's weird. I played Victor Vran. Who, who is he? Is he? Is that the guy who plays the Witcher in the Witcher? No, uh, I don't think so. Most notably, Geralt of Rivia in the Witcher series. What? He's the dad? Okay, the, I only hear him on voicemails. Cockle is known for voiceover roles in video games, most notably Geralt of Rivia in the Witcher series. He was nominated for a Game Award for Best Performance and won Gold Joystick Award Best Game Performance for his portrayal of Geralt in Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Wow. And the store Steam Store page says, plays the role of Ashley's berating father. Yeah, I'm Ashley. Uh, boy, Ashley. So Geralt's like, you know. That's laundry, weird. Laundry is spinning. <laughs> 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 spinning. Dude, you're not kidding. I'll be. I'll go to the office and it'll tell me a little interface to say you have a voicemail from your dad. You go in there and put, hit this old voicemail machine. Uh, not voicemail machine. What they call them? Answering machine. And it would come. It comes on. And it, but it has a phone sound to it. So I've ne- I haven't been able to pick out that that's Gr- uh, Geralt of Rivia. But I'm going to notice it next time. That's wild. You need yeah, to keep up on your says, studies. Cause you know, the even the heading. A thong and underwear. <laughs> Even the heading, I don't know if you get this reference, says Gerald in the Riviera. Gerald oh. of Rivia, Gerald in the Riviera. Oh, I don't Riviera know. The, He's off on vacation. Ri- so maybe, yeah, maybe I didn't. that's a cheeky little reference. Yeah, right that's there. fun. That's fun. I love it's, it, dude. I love it. <laughs> I guess that. it wasn't, it's not doing his iconic Witcher voice, I guess. No, not not in the way you'd think. But also, in. you know, voicemails, I mean, y'all sound weird on voicemails. It's just the way that is, but. It's uh, it's interesting. The one thing that this video hasn't shown yet is when you walk up to somebody who's in the arcade, they will, as you get closer to them, they will pixelate until they are until they disappear. The people in the place really aren't important. They're there for flavor, um, and if they're in the way, they immediately turn into. You're like a psycho about pixels and video games. Oh yeah, here's the GTA uh, Pac-Man ripoff. Um, it's kind of cool. Look at that. That's kind of clever. <laughs> yeah, the neat little. You see that yeah. font up there? That, that very font. GTA picking up money. When you get it's the power Pac-Man pellet, the you GTA become a, a yep. tank. And then when you get hit, you have to get out and run. And I think you can shoot oh, music. Oh. Yeah, you can shoot music notes because you got a boombox at the cops and confuse them. And I forget how you get back in a car. I think you got to follow the arrow. You yeah. can probably make this as a standalone game for three ninety nine on Steam. Honestly, yeah, like, you probably know. could. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of those like that. Some more mechanics to it and stuff, but yeah. The match three was like that. The match three was like, oh, I really like this one too. This one's called Stack Overflow. And your job is to go and stack all the colored boxes in the only their colors. And it gets more hard. It gets it's like a puzzle game. It gets harder and harder. Dark Mario style. Kinda. And uh when you're done, your boss, let's see if it does it here. I don't have the audio for it, but your boss will come and say something real cheesy. Like, here he is. He'll go, you deserve a pay raise. So he'll just come out. But they do this voice for her go, because it's like old arcade sounds and stuff. Oh, it's so good. You guys, I'm I'm kind of in love with it. And it's not perfect. There's there's some stuff in it that feels like kind of maybe some early game pacing could be a little better. I mean, there's I don't have nothing. I don't have all glowing things to say about it. But given my... <laughs> My life experience combined with uh, my love of chore core, this was a big surprise for me. And I think worth checking out, even at 19, if you are uh, at all curious about what I described. All right. Sorry that took so long. That was a long one. I don't know. This one really impacted you. Yeah. It was weird. And when it plays great on uh, uh, Steam Deck, just like beautifully. I played it in both on my PC and Steam Deck. Zero issues on Steam Deck. Um, Okay. I also played Card Crawl Adventure. Y'all heard of this? Uh, I heard, did see yes. it. I didn't look too deep into it. Honestly, I saw it and was like, I bet Scott plays this. Yeah. And he can tell me about it. Absolutely do and did. So this is originally a mobile game. Uh, this is a video of my stream the other day. I played a little bit for for the chat room. But um, there was originally a game on iOS called Card Crawl. And I used to love it. It was a purely premium game. So it was like three bucks. You bought it and you played it. And it had this really great sort of um, deck buildy kind of card combat kind of uh, thing going on with it. And it was pretty good. They also made a game called Thief something or Card Thief. 
And it was very similar, except it was now this grid, and you kind of like worked through the grid to kill other cards with your cards, and it was like this whole different kind of game. Basically, they've come back to the card crawl name, and they've combined the two game types into one new game. And it also started on mobile and tablets, and it is now on Steam. Steam version is only $3.99, I think, uh, maybe a little less on sale. And it's great. Um, again, I always like to talk about these games that are perfect for a boring Zoom meeting where you don't need to pay that much attention. <laughs> yeah. Perfect for that. It's great. It runs great on Mac, on PC. I haven't tried it on Steam Deck. I'm, it's probably tricky because I don't think you use the controller. But uh, with the mouse and keyboard, it's, it's just very simple, very intuitive. And to give you the guts of it, it's basically you have weapon cards, special ability cards, buff cards, those sort of things. They all get laid out in a nine-card grid among some enemies and your job is to draw a line from weapons to crates to creatures to whatever to best utilize your turn so that you kill as many things as you can take as little damage as possible get loot um you know that sort of stuff and survive the day uh for three full shuffles of your deck those that's the 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 three stages of the game and it's uh, like a lot of these games, the, the fun of it comes in with just like the variety of stuff that'll pop up. Like this sword's got plus this and plus that. And this this other thing will hurt you if you use it, but it'll also hurt everybody else on the grid. So it might be worth it. Um, and because there's an apple up there, you can finish on the apple. And so the three points of health you lost during this fight will be replenished because you have a three-point apple to eat and heal. Um, it's that kind of thinking. You also have a, uh, you also have a kind of an equipment panel. So throughout the game, you, you'll get better items that you can put in there, and they're just basically uh, passive uh, buffs for different things. So like a certain one, might a better quiver might give you plus two to accuracy, or uh, something else might give you a plus something to health. There's also a bunch of characters to choose from this time around. So I want to say I saw at least six of those. I've only played the Rogue Lady and this robot thing and they both had different abilities think like dicey dungeons remember that john that game yeah think like yeah. that with the characters so they all have different strengths and weaknesses or whatever like any of these games you're always you know you choose an archer or you choose a, a tank or you choose a wizard or whatever it's like that yeah even though it's cards they find ways to make it feel unique yeah exactly if you're a wizard you have less hit points but you have more magic power or whatever it is uh it's very simple to understand and to play and is really rewarding and fun. I highly recommend it, especially at that price. It's stupid cheap and um, it's really fun. Card Crawl Adventure on Steam now and on mobile. It's also there if you want to play it there. Uh, and then John's Fault for something. Let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> yep. Uh, Phoenix Rising, Immortals Phoenix Rising to be specific, from Ubisoft went on sale on Steam for 11 bucks, went 80% off for a short Ubisoft That's thing. That's crazy. It is crazy. S stupid cheap for an incredible game. I say this a lot and I get in trouble for it a lot, but I still say this is better than Breath of the Wild. They're similar games. I think this pulls it off better. Sorry, <laughs> sue me, whatever. Um, I like this game better. Yeah, you're pissing off the Destiny people and the Zelda people, <laughs> two crowds that are well known for yep. just going, well, you know, different strokes for different folks and letting it go. Yeah, but not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm causing a brand new stink here. Um, I really, really like that game, and I played it when it came out on Series X and played it pretty far, but it didn't finish. I don't remember why I didn't, just like anything else. I was it's a on. long game. It's I'm going to tell game. you why you didn't finish. This game's long as hell. It is pretty long, especially if you're trying to 100% everything and just go nuts with it. But uh, I really like the systems in it. I think it's the best game Ubisoft's made in a long time. I, like Legitimately, I believe that. And I hope they have something in the works for a follow-up. I think that would be really great. Anyway, I decided, even though I already owned it on Series X, that I would get it again for this 11 measly dollars because it sounded like it'd be good on the Steam Deck at night and then whenever I wanted to play it, I could play it wherever. It has synced cloud saves, so I can play it anywhere and have that progress. But I did want to start over because I just forgot everything. It's like, well, wait, what was I doing? I, I should probably start over. So I did. And uh, the game's awesome. 11 bucks, stupid cheap. We talked about it a couple weeks ago because John was playing it again. It's on Game Pass as well. So for all of you yelling into your headphones that, just play it on Game Pass, stream it. I, I get it, I know. 
But I can share all those <laughs> saves too. I can share saves everywhere. All right. I like. I'm a big yeah. fan of that. I like to play where I want to play that day. And it's remember, fine. Game Pass, you don't keep it. Like if you have a save file and you're like, I'd like to play this somewhere else, then you got to buy it anyways. Yeah. So if you, yeah, you know, try it on Game Pass, and if you like it, I say buy it. Yeah, if you can. As someone who frequently wants to play the uh, near Become as Gods edition that is on the microsoft store alone and it is not always on game pass sometimes you got to buy the games you want to come back to and play again because they don't stay there forever right especially so. third part well 100 percent third party you never know when they're going to go sometimes they may have longer deals but you know i'm not worried about halo going anywhere but this game you know ubisoft could pull it uh and plus, I already bought it before it was on Game Pass. <laughs> it's like I already owned it, then played it, then had it on Game Pass, and then bought it again. But eleven bucks, pff, it's freaking no brainer. Um, the game's yeah, great. It's really fun. It feels great. Cheap. Yeah, it continues to be great. I want to do more unlocking of stuff that I didn't the first time. Like you know, and for as much as people talk about like oh, some of these games that try to be funny or try to be witty or are very cringy, like. This game isn't oh, doesn't always land with its humor. Some of its humor isn't the best, but I find that the jokes in this game hit more than they miss or are indifferent more often than not. Like I this agree. game genuinely makes me chuckle sometimes. It's not it's not a like oh raucous good time. This is the funniest game I've ever heard, but um there are some there are some good jokes in there. There um, really are. Especially if you know your Greek mythology. Yeah, and it's um, mostly... they sneak Zeus. some real dirty stuff in there. If oh, you know oh, yeah. The Greek mythology. <laughs> they definitely do. But like Zeus and... Uh, who's... Uh, Hermeticles or whatever his name is. Is it... Is it it's not Hephaestus. Hephaestus? That he's talking to, right? I forget. Who is it? It's the guy who's chained up for giving fire. Yeah, that's Hephaestus, Hephaestus, right? yeah. He's the one that... I'm like, you got to know your Greek mythology. And then it's like, <laughs> who's this guy? I don't know. The guy who brought fire know. to people. He has snow stuck to his armpits. It's really funny if you know your Greek mythology. Who brought people fire? <laughs> <laughs> well, while you're running around just like doing work, those two are having a pretty funny conversation. And yeah. it has a way of catching you off guard. Because he'll be, Hephaestus will be very serious about Prometheus. That's Prometheus, what it that's is it. There. Chat, chat got there for us. Thank you. Chat. Thanks, chat. But he'll be like, uh, then there's this time when he was able to do the thing for Heracles. He's being all serious. And then Zeus will go, What the hell are you talking about? Like, it'll catch you off guard and make you go, Oh, yeah, right. right. These two chuckleheads won't shut up about whatever bullshit they're dealing with. It's, it's, I agree with you. It hits more than it misses. It's not perfect, but they, it's actually pretty funny. And uh, I just like arrows that regenerate and weapons that don't break. All right. Well, I will also say, like, you know, for all the discussion we had, although I'm surprised not a lot of pushback on uh, for how constantly chatty Atomic Heart was, I think this game shows how to do frequent chatting well by not pretending that it's the funniest, most important dialogue you've ever heard and putting it forefront. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're just chatting quietly in the background. And like, you have to kind of decide if you want to pay attention to hear it or not. Mm -hmm. Like the game doesn't pretend that you really want to hear the two of them yucking it up. Mm -hmm. And so they just, they'll just have it on in the background and it's so easy to tune out instead of them shining a light on it like, oh, yeah, can't wait until you make this joke about how gods are dicks. Oh, you got to hear it. It's the best one yet. <laughs> yeah, no, you're, you're totally right. Those are all, that's all a good description of why I like it. Um, and I just think it plays really well. And, and I, I hope they, you know, I don't, I never thought when this came out that it would have Assassin's Creed level numbers or something for, for Ubisoft, but I hope it sold enough for them um, to, to want to revisit it because I would definitely play a sequel to this game. I really like it. Um, all right. And then just usual stuff. ESO. I'm making some furniture. I'm not going to bow any, bow anyone, <laughs> bore anyone with it. <laughs> You're going to bow anyone. Well, Sorry. I, I mean, please. I meant bore. Um, yeah, just, I won't. Just ask first. Oh. Be okay. <laughs> I just, I'm making furniture. I'm finding, I, I'm doing these guides that tell me where certain recipes are. Some, I had to fish, a, I had to fish a desk out of the, out of the Oh boy. River. Now so. you're combining housing with fishing. Bo is oh. just getting more yeah. and more <laughs> tilted. Yeah, definitely <laughs> happened. Um, anyway, ESO is still great. By right. the way, did you guys watch that developer update for Diablo 4? I did. I what did you? Adding player I, housing. Yeah. 
No, but they did mention. At one point, I just I visibly like flinched when they were like, "By the way, in Diablo Immortal, we added fishing." Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, like all oh, corporate happy. <laughs> I, just it made it, you saying the fishing thing reminded me of that. I was like, oh. sure. Yeah, they're into the fit. They want you I'm to like, fish. That's awesome. And I'm like, really? You really think that's awesome? Someone, <laughs> Bo, you will be happy like to know just... that I have yet to engage in fishing in Final Fantasy. So at some point right. in the future, <laughs> there is going to be a moment where I discover it and I come on the show and like it's a revelation. Just yeah. be like, guys, I fished this week. Not I'm you sure fish, you'll try but... fishing as you mine that game for every minute of entertainment it's worth, but yeah. I don't think you're going to be a long-termer. <laughs> I, I, so I have done it, like and I will say games. the mini game is better than WoW's, but I've heard that the people yeah. who really like it in Final Fantasy, it's because they do uh, fishing cruises, which I don't know exactly what it is, but I know it's like a bunch of players all get on a boat as like a social gathering, yeah. and it goes out to very specific spots all together, and that seems like, oh, ocean voyages, that's what it's called. So yeah, and it, they turn fishing into like a social engagement, and I can see myself maybe getting into that sort of thing, but I haven't done it yet, so that's it actually the... sounds, you know, kind of cool, like honestly, the the community aspect, the casual chatting... It's like VR chat, except in Final Fantasy. Yeah. People can fish as an excuse that they have something important to do, but really they're just, you know, it's a chat room. Well, WoW always had those, right? They had like a fish tournament crap They had a thing. tournament, but it wasn't really social. It was competitive. So you were like, you were talking to people that were near you, but it was like, get the off my thing. You, what the hell? Go fish <laughs> somewhere else. I got to win this tournament. Yeah, yeah. I found that the, the, so, there was... It wasn't the fishing tournament, but I think there was, I think it was, was it Warlords of Draenor? Um, there was one point where there was a, some group activities. One of them was getting a rare drop mount. Like there was a raid boss. It was Warlords of Draenor. There was a wolf. That dropped in fishing? In the side, and I think, I can't remember what it was on the other one or maybe it was a wolf for everyone but you you group up in dungeon finder oh yeah that's be, right you, yeah that take was turns, taking a everyone would take turns you kill the thing over and over again i yeah. was there for yeah. eight hours or, and everyone would take turn whoever was next someone kept the list when the drop dropped that next person got it out he went and someone new got invited and you chatted <laughs> like what else are you we gonna used do? to do that after raid night scott mm-hmm yeah, we the, the guild and, had stuff and too. Sit up on the stupid hill and wait for the wolves to spawn. Yeah, and they had a they had a thing going on Saturdays where uh, they would schedule like a fishing expedition with whoever wanted to go. So I we never were... did as much of that kind of activity as I did in Warlords of Draenor, and I kind of liked it. Like that's why the fishing thing like sounds okay because like oh, you're chatting with strangers in a chat room, social in the game, cool. Yeah, you know the fishing not so much, but like. Is farming for some rare mount any better? It's basically fishing, but with knives. Fair point. You know, so, yeah. yeah. It's a fair point. Uh, oh, and I promised myself I'd do this, even though Grandma will do it at the end of the show. My games were Arcade Paradise, Card Crawl Adventure, and uh, Immortals Phoenix Rising. I don't take Grandma's job away from her. She'll still, we'll need, we need her either way, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, look, just people if people have... couldn't pay attention the first time, that does it. They're not going to pay attention the second time. All right, sorry, I got indignant for Grandma. It's clearly, yeah, she's no defending. Yeah. So. Yeah, she's she'll be fine. She's. <laughs> I like that you you white knighted for Grandma. I like that. <laughs> and guys. everyone's like, "Don't worry about it. She's fine. That's she's awesome." Okay, doing guys. What she's right. gonna do. I love it. Speaking of uh, Grandma, don't ever get lost in the forest, Grandma, because there's sons in there or something. Tell me about Sons of the Forest. <laughs> sort of. What a transition. Scott. Yeah, pretty good. Uh, yeah, I tried uh, Sons of the Forest, a game that is the sequel to. The Forest, uh, a survival game uh, that just came out in early access. And I'm going to say, hey, don't expect me to have a big review for it because I didn't have a lot of time to play it. Yeah. And the times that I got in, I encountered some weird bugs or... It's early access, right? Yeah. It is early access. Yeah. Um, I So I tried to play The Forest back when it came out and... I found the way it controlled and played really like unnecessarily cumbersome. Um, sometimes I think like shoddy controls can actually kind of enhance a game um, 
in a way. Like it shouldn't. It, it should never be like I am Resident Evil. That's effect. that's fun for streaming and stuff like that. Like your meme games. Yeah. But I feel like you know there's kind of a there's wiggle room when it comes to how a game plays that it needs to it needs to play a certain degree at least fun and playable. And uh, to be clear, when I tried the forest, it was very early in its early access life. Um, but I I did not like how the game controlled and played, and so I never really went back to it. I was never really interested. Um, playing Sons of the Forest, I was like, okay, well, they're a whole game behind them. They've learned a lot. Um, it looked good from, you know, seeing people stream it. I got in and started playing it, and I was like, something that feels off about this. And... I don't know how much of that is the actual game versus I then quickly realized that I was bugged and couldn't reopen my inventory and couldn't put like things down. And I just got locked in a loop of like looking at my feet and standing perfectly still, almost like I was T posing, <laughs> yeah. but I couldn't see that I was T posing. Yeah. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? And it's not telling me to press any buttons or anything like that. And then all of a sudden it would go back to where I could move. And I'd press any button and I would just like kind of lock up and T-pose again. And with the limited amount of time that I had to play games this week, um, I just didn't feel like fighting it. So I had two like fairly short, fairly janky experiences with it, which I know is not the norm because I've seen enough people play this. I was uh, the reason I got it was um, watching other people stream it and play it. I know that my experience is not. I've seen people encounter bugs, but not like stuff that locked up the game to that degree. Sure. So I know it's not necessarily common. I don't want to make it sound like it is an awful mess, but I was two for two on playing the game and fairly quickly encountering bugs that just made the game frustrating to play. And uh, I eventually gave up and was like, nope. I, I maybe I'll check it out a little bit later when things are a little more stable. It definitely seems like a cool game. There's a lot of creepy stuff going on in the forest, which you know I'm down for that. Uh, a lot of cannibalism. Scott shows someone. Yeah, a guy just ate arm. a leg and a and an arm. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. Yeah, just, just chow down on it. All right. Um, it definitely seems like there's some really cool things there. I just I wasn't able to get to it, so I figured I would mention I played it. Um. Is it the first thing you did is get out and hit a tree, punch a tree a bunch of times? Or is it because I, uh, I kind of hate that about these games. It's always no, like... the first thing they drop you on the beach with like a bunch of supply crates there. And um, you're you're able to get a decent amount of like basics right out of the gate. Mm. Um, so and there's a dude who uh, like a squad member because you go in as like a military squad looking for these people. And there's a guy who, you know, he sustained some injury. It looks like he's he's now deaf. He's got blood coming out of both his ears. Um, so you write notes to him to tell him what to do. And he just kind of goes and does what you tell him. So, like, you land and you can be <laughs> like, hey, follow me. Or you can be like, hey, just go start collecting sticks and drop them here. Yeah. And he'll just go off and he'll just get sticks till you tell him to do something else. And that's what he'll go and do. Um it, it it looks really cool. Uh, some of the stuff that I've seen later in it look really neat. I love, you know, the way it looks to be, you know, chopping down trees and exploring in the water and all that. Like, graphically, it looks really nice. I just, I didn't get to see any of that. So, yeah, um, too early. Yeah, too early for me to really say much. But I figured I would mention it because I know that game is really popping off on popularity right now. Uh, it also does sound, because I did read a couple things about it, it sounds like it's a little feature light at the moment. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people saying it's not that hard, and there's really not a ton to do besides your basic survival stuff and fight cannibals. But, um, you know, it's early access. It'll, yeah. it'll evolve. It'll get, or it'll, we'll get there, sure. Yeah. All right, uh, tell me, this other one I can't understand. John played Genshin Impact. Are you sure this is not a typo? Genshin Impact. What I, the hell? I know, I know. So tell, why? why? What, what happened? I mean, I understand why. Actually, I understand why. You uh, like Genshin Impact, don't you, Bo? It's a gorgeous game, and I can see it being appealing. Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah that's, you know what? Bo nailed it. I had installed this game and uninstalled this game without playing it probably three times. And it's 
I was just like, I got to try it. I got to know. Because I feel like every time we talk about Genshin Impact, we talk about it being this gotcha game after your wallet, and there's always people immediately in Discord like defending it. They're like, it's not as bad as you think. It's it's fine. You can actually play it. It's It's fine. And it's one of those things where at a certain point, I'm like, okay, I got to know. And it was also just curiosity because you hear about Genshin Impact a lot. And I had no idea what type of game this is. Like people talk about it like it's an MMO, but I know it's not an MMO, at least in the traditional sense. Right. It's like you can play up to four players, I think. Yeah. So I, I was like, I got to I got to try this game. I got to play it. And I booted it up just to see. And Bo's right. This is one of the most beautiful looking games I've seen. Like, it's not an MMO, but it immediately made me wish that this was an MMO. Mm. That I could just. The environments are really genuinely impressive. Like, everything the cinematics, the modeling. Like, yeah, it may not be your art style, but everything has a loving touch. Yeah. to it like animation wise and stuff it's it's 10 on 10 i'd give it I'll, i will absolutely give you that i don't love the aesthetic of the floating pixie anime girl but i like the the environments in particular are amazing the cell shading on the characters is really cool like they didn't they seem the like they spared much expense cool. the ui is gorgeous yeah. I, I agree like, yeah it's pretty it, game it, it, the packaging around it is so good like I immediately just wanted to explore the world. Like, in fact, I even failed a quest because I went off the path too much immediately right out of the gate. And the game was like, hey, you left the quest. And I was like, of course I left the quest. Have you seen this world? I just want to get out and explore it and, and play in it. Yeah. Like, um, is it, it open is world in that regard? To... Is it open world in that way, or is it not? Like, can you go do shit? Just yeah, it's open you... world. It's yeah, it is, okay. it is exploration. Open world. You explore, and then you find things, and then that's how you progress and unlock. Like, okay, it's designed to be that way. Yes, Ex- yeah. open world exploration. Okay, with dun- with dungeons and all that stuff. Right. Where it gets wonky is the dungeons are more like a bad Diablo. Like it's you know you're trying to build up your character's power, and you know, earn better gear. Bad Diablo. To do more it. damage. Yeah, it's bad Diablo because, like, I don't know how far you've gotten, John. The combat's pretty for, you know, baby game, basically. Yeah, yeah, it is. I very quickly realized this. I was like, oh, this is this is simple. Mm, um, I don't know how much time I'm going to spend with it. I think most of my time spent with it was wishing it was a different game than what it is. Um, which again is a testament to the art, the style, um, the world design, uh, the way it plays, honestly, like it plays fantastic. Like just running around and exploring kind of like Zelda. If you see a surface, you can just kind of climb it. There's a fatigue bar is to, you know, limit how high you can climb, but you can just climb up it. Um, (laughs) it's genuinely like a pretty cool game and I was surprised by it. Uh, but yes, the primary thing is I spent the entire time wishing it was a different game. Yeah. Just going like, man, I wish I could play a a real MMO or a real Diablo style uh, game um, in in this world that wasn't so microtransactiony. And, and you haven't hit the Ding Desert yet, have you? No, not even because close. Because this game is also a PC mobile game. <laughs> I mean, it's, you can play it on your phone. There's literally a mobile client. Yeah, um, looks great on mobile too, actually. But um, in order to level up your dudes, you got to get three of a dude, and then you upgrade it one star, and you get a high, slightly level dude. You got to get new characters. You got to open loot boxes that you pay for, and the the I'm going to complain about this too about another game. But at a certain point, John, you're out exploring the world. When you run out of energy, you can't turn in quests unless you pay money. What? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. You of haven't gotten there I'm yet. Like, that, yeah. That's why I bailed. I was like, the gotcha stuff might have been okay. The baby combat, maybe okay. Oh, you're just gonna make me stop playing unless I put money in the arcade machine, eh? Uh, I have thousands of games to choose from. Uh, go pound sand. Goodbye, game. <laughs> trash, <laughs> trash, <Yeah>. trash bin. <laughs> wow, you really, yeah, you you cut ties, man, hard. You were like, yeah, uh-uh. that, that, I, I, I mean, mean, that's the most egregious sin of them all is mm. to be like, yeah, we locked your game behind artificial constraints, which only involve you putting quarters in the machine. I'm like, I didn't pay $3,000 to 
you can milk more money out of me. Like, eat shit. <laughs> yeah, it just made me sad that there aren't more games that, like, look like this. Like, I can't think of the last time that I played a, a game, uh, open world or, you know, MMO, where I was so just motivated by how it looked to go and explore. Yeah. Um, you know, like, we just talked about Phoenix Rising, and, like, Phoenix Rising I explore because it's a fun game to play. I don't go into that world and go, oh my gosh, I got to go and explore this whole place. I want to see all of this. Like, it just didn't capture on that level. This did. And that that's kind of crazy to me how effective this was at that. But then it just it just wasn't that game uh, at its core. So I don't think I'm going to play much of it, especially hearing where some of those trappings come in later, because those are trappings that will definitely anger me. Nothing mm -hmm. makes me more angry than uh, energy systems. Yeah. Like that to me is the cardinal sin. There's a lot of sins you can you can do in free to play. Um, an energy system is probably number one on my list of no nos for things that I will not condone in a video game. So. Um, I can't see me having a future with this game, but I didn't hate my time in it either. Yeah, that's it's interesting, right? You just feel like they could have, I don't know, their sci-fi one they got coming. I'm kind of interested if it does anything different or drastically different. I don't know. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah. I'm hoping. Uh, <laughs> I'm hoping it doesn't, isn't shit, but you know it's gonna be. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm worried about. <laughs> it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But still, they have lots of people willing to pay and play. It's a popular category, I think, even now on Twitch, for example. Yeah. Oh so. yeah, people like this game a lot. Those whales, man, they love spending tens of thousands of dollars on their Genshin Impact. How come there was a screen sh where the girl like front farted an apple and then she ate it. Did you see what that, but then that happened? Is that a I normal mean, thing? You know, lots of things happen in, uh, in the world. You never okay. know. All right. Maybe I'm in then. You got to keep an apple somewhere. Where are you going to keep an apple? <laughs> I don't know. I didn't think about it. If you don't have room in your fancy fantasy bunny clothes, where else are you going to put it? In your front butt. That's where you put it. All right. Yeah. John, you played that. Tell us uh, about uh, Chrono Cross, the Radical Dreamers edition, which I guess is a big update. Yeah? What happened there? Uh, I mean, it turns out it was a pretty small update, but it changes things pretty dramatically. We talked about this last week, and I said I hadn't had a chance to play it. I played it. I booted it up. I booted up my previous save uh, to kind of see where we were at on the frame rate thing. That was the biggest issue that they addressed, was that the frame rate in the game was complete garbage when it launched. And I'm happy to say they fixed it. Like, it's not even... A lot of times it feels like when gamers say, hey, we have an issue with something and it's this, and then the company goes, we've addressed it. Somebody goes, they didn't really, but here's how you can actually fix it. We found another way to fix the problem for them. Nope, I downloaded the official patch, I loaded it up and went, huh, the frame rate's good. <laughs> what a crazy thing. Um, so, you know, it is still a you know, a up res of a PlayStation one game. Yeah. Like there is still limitations, but I went in j literally just to check the frame rate to see if it was better. And I wound up playing for about an hour just because I was like, Oh, it's just so much more playable now. Yeah. Um, so if you bought that game, um, especially cause I talked about it all the time. Yeah. Um, you were, you were pretty I stoked like about Chrono this. Cross. Yeah. Um, I'm happy to say I even bought it for Ben for his birthday because he also loves Chrono Cross. Mm -hmm. And so I sent him a text message and said, hey, it's about a year later, so uh, enjoy that birthday present I got for you. It's finally playable. <laughs> way, nice. way to go. Nice. We did it. This um, is a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger, yes? Or no? It's, it's a quasi-sequel. Okay. It is, but it's... It's like a side sequel, I guess is what you would call it. Have you talked about this before? It was kind of controversial at the time. It was like a... Uh, well, people know. people were not happy with it. People wanted a direct sequel to Chrono Trigger, and this was not it. And mm. the fact that this game alludes to the fact that all three main characters from Chrono Trigger are dead uh, did not make people happy. Oh, um, man. <laughs> if, they, if they could have review-bombed <laughs> Steam back then, they would have review-bombed it out of existence. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, like Destiny fans getting mad about their story, Chrono Trigger fans mad about this. They were like, no, thank you. Uh, but this game has a fantastic battle system that encourages every character to both do their physical attacks and magic attacks. They feed into each other. Um, 
which is I, I really like that because in a in an RPG it's very easy to just go like oh this character just cast magic they're just my my healer um and you know they'll show a character with an awesome weapon I, I mean this is even in Chrono Trigger you got uh Magus who's got like this cool scythe but he's a caster so mm. he just casts spells he doesn't really do much with it but sure. um this game kind of encourages actually it requires that you do uh physical attacks as well as magic and kind of mix it up and uh has a really good combat system and same deal as chrono trigger you see the enemies on the screen it does take you to a battle screen once you encounter them but it does allow you to fight uh or avoid fights instead of having to deal with always random encounters i do like that i saw i was looking at footage of them purposely running into a golem or avoiding it when, and that always makes me happy with GRPGs. Yeah. I mean, it's still fake at some points. Like, you're just walking down the hall and something just drops from above and falls on you. It's like, well, that's the same as a random encounter. <laughs> it just, like, I saw it as it happened. Like, you know, but it, it is true. You can at least see it. So there are some that you can avoid. It, it's a cool game. Um, it's definitely very different than Chrono Trigger. Um, but I, I have always held a soft spot for it although it did make me realize just how dramatic of a child i was because i oh. i remember thinking like the story is so deep and so serious mm -hmm. and the story basically boils down to everybody being like man if i had made one different choice in life my life would have been so much different <laughs> and it's just a lot of people just waxing poetically about how like god if i hadn't gotten married wouldn't yeah. have this kid but yeah. maybe i could have pursued art <laughs> like it's just a lot of people doing that because that's the crux of the game and uh as a kid i was like oh it's so deep it's so good it speaks to my soul and then now as an adult i'm like There's a lot of emo kids in this game wow that's amazing all right uh, you know you grow up and you have a you have a different taste for story i get it makes sense yeah yeah, yeah uh all right you played a bunch of that that's awesome and then the big shocker of the day a game that you've never truly been able to stick with oh my god so i know right the genshin impact first now this H hollow knight H what happened explain yourself well like i said i didn't have a lot of time to play games and being the only person <laughs> responsible for the baby not being able to tag out and say like hey i need a break you know things like that it meant that a lot of the games that i typically play that don't pause or things like that um were off the table i couldn't couldn't just play Fortnite. you know baby was sure we're teaching the baby to enjoy a new bed that he can get out of quite easily and just roam um so we have to be more active parents these days so sure. i needed something that i could pick up and put down and uh i made my controversial you know get in the comments joke about <laughs> hollow knight last week yeah. uh try to up our audience engagement ratio by making fun of um how drab the game looks uh -huh. and uh i thought you know i i am a firm believer that nobody should ever just hold an opinion forever and not rethink it you know if that was the case we'd never try food again uh, i would never have eaten sushi right. you know you shouldn't just be like i hate this thing forever yeah. and i'm never gonna i'm never gonna touch it i'm never gonna interact with yeah, it. I, I didn't eat eggs or mustard till i was 18 Whoa. yeah look at that and Jeez. i love both those things i do too i like them together sometimes yeah but 18 years i was like no no disgusting mustard freaking gross really so I, and I same actually, with eggs. Yes, it's because you know my family they make like smelly eggs, right? Like, do they? What? They boil them and they look like oh. shit, right? Like you have a scrambled egg and you're like, damn son, that's good. You Bro, know? I see. Okay, it's all in the preparation. Yeah. Yeah, smelly that. eggs adjacent to Scott's weird <laughs> eggs. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I made one weird. today and it didn't explode. I was really proud of myself. I think it's like pickled eggs or something. Like you put vinegar in oh, it, you yeah, boil yeah, it. Yeah. Like it just looks like ridiculous. Like I think. That's the eggs that were around, and I was like, I am never eating whatever that white turd is. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you got over that, because mustard's amazing. I love mustard. And also, like, potato salad stuff. Anything where egg looks like it's margarine. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Like the yeah. way you like mayo? Yeah. How do you feel about mayo? Although I do love a good egg salad sandwich. If it's actually, if it's I would always eat mayo, but I mean, the rationale is just that it's so blended that it's, oh, I see, it doesn't feel like eggs. Yeah, no, that's true. I agree mm-hmm. that. Um, so have you turned then? Is as Hollow Knight made you? Yeah, a is believer? it shit as you predicted, or is it actually amazing and you lost several hours of sleep to it? I mean, the things that everybody says when I when I say like, well, why is Hollow Knight such a good game? Is true. Um, the controls are very tight. Um, the gameplay is solid. Tight. It's very yeah. atmospheric, although yeah. I would say it's atmospheric in a way that I don't like for this style of game. And that's really what it kind of boils down to is like the decisions made for this game were all made for intention. It's not like this game is um, accidentally not for me. It's intentionally not for me, which is fine because it makes it intentionally for other people. Um, I think that when it comes to this style of game, Metroidvania, whatever you want to call it, um, I think having a map that functions is a key part of that game. <laughs> they have tried to gamify it yeah. and make it a part of the game. Like, and it's an important part of the game. It's part of the reason why you collect the little beetle shells or whatever. Like, it, it's why you want currency. It's it's a mechanic in the game. But it's taken something that I don't think should be a mechanic in the game and made it a mechanic in the game. So for the people Mm. that think that's great, that's great. For me, I'm like, all right, you took out something that I feel is necessary to be this thing and removed it. Um, Mm. So I also don't like that that's not there. It drives it drove me crazy in my attempted playthroughs of this game for the same reason. And it doesn't take long because I haven't put a ton of time in it. It doesn't take long to mostly get around it. I've already, you know, in the two or three hours that I've played of it, it might not even be that, honestly. I already have a map. I already have a compass that shows my position on the map. And I already have that whenever I sit at a bench, it will draw in whatever places I've been that weren't already on the map. Right. That's pretty good. I just feel like that should be there immediately. (laughs) Like, I don't feel like I should have had to unlock it. I don't feel like I should have to sit at a bench. But that's the decision they made for the game. I just personally don't like it. And it's same thing with the atmosphere. Like, I like the big bombastic nature of the Castlevania series. Um... Or the outright spooky, like, loneliness of the Metroid series. Mm. Hollow Knight does kind of go on the lonely side, like the dark kind of lonely side. But just, it it's never big. It's never bombastic. It's never badass. It's just kind of these bugs. <laughs> and it's just not an aesthetic that I love. I think and I, so think I know again, what it is. You've said this before. You don't like precious indie. The this looks like a game made by the inside or outside people or whatever is that game you hate. <laughs> inside out. It's got he that, says he doesn't like games that are so up its own butt with its indie art. Yeah, is that what the I problem I here? I don't. I think I, I get more that it's just that this fiction world. You know how like what's the opposite of Mad Max? Uh. All other things. Ewoks. You know how you feel like you want to watch Mad Max Fury Road? Yeah. You know, what, what would be the opposite film that turns the, you off? The Ewok so Adventure. The Ewok Adventure. No, I, even that has too much adventure. Let's say um, uh, that the opposite yeah, would Hallmark be... Hallmark movie, probably. Yeah, right? Hallmark Christmas film. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay. So it's like, it's like, imagine it was a Hallmark Christmas film, but they were driving in cars and chasing each other, but they were sending compliments like it's some weird chase <laughs> in a wintry backdrop and everyone's lovely and giving compliments you're like this look this is the genre i like chasing cars and metal but everyone's pleasant like a hallmark mad max fury road sure that, you would hate that yeah, yeah I, just, and yeah. i think i think bo's right on that it's not that i it's not that i think this is indie up its own but i don't think it is like i think there really is a legitimately good game here just to be clear where my stance is on it i just don't think it's designed with the things i like about it in mind i mean when we were doing when i was doing all my steam preview stuff i talked about that one 
Um, oh, with the sisters or the the t- two girls that switch and stuff. I try. I'm yeah. getting, I think I'm gonna get that game. That looks so. So cool. it turns out I was a little bit wrong. It's not a Metroidvania. It actually is more like a traditional Castlevania game where it's linear. Yeah. Um, it seems a little more open in its design, but it's actually it plays more like the early Castlevania games, which is also fine. But the moment that that game. I was like, oh man, this game's awesome, was the second I pulled out a submachine gun and started firing it. You're never going to do that in Hollow Knight, just no. to be clear. <laughs> like, you're, that's not going to be... Steam a... review now, no submachine gun. Yeah, <laughs> thumbs down. There's not going to be a moment where I go, wow, oh my goodness, this game really turned up the badassery to 100. Like, it is what it is. And for the people that love that, that's... It's going to be special to them, but I like Castlevania. I like looting Excalibur and finding out it's a giant mace because it's still stuck in the stone and you just swing sword and stone at all the enemies across the screen. Like, I think that stuff is cool. That's what I love about it. And uh, that's what I love about the genre is I, I love it going big. And Hollow Knight just feels very muted in a lot of different ways. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to try and stick with it. Obviously with my wife back, I have gaming time back again. Yeah. So I can't promise I'll stick with it because <laughs> all of a sudden my, my options are more open, but, yeah. um, I'm not, I didn't hate my time with it to be clear. Like the, I understand better why it doesn't appeal to me and why it does appeal to other people, but I didn't walk away going, Ugh, I hate it. I just didn't walk away feeling like, oh, I now feel it is special like all those other people that think. See, it's interesting. The aesthetic of it actually works for me, and I'm totally fine with it. That was never my problem. My biggest problem is I felt like I was lost more than I wasn't. And you can say, well, Scott, that's a you problem. Maybe it is. But I like a game that wants me to succeed. And this game actively wanted me to be lost, it felt like. And it wanted me yeah. to be lost so that I could find myself again, right? Like, oh, well, this I am lost, and I've gone this whole way, and this is the wrong direction. And there's no indication of why I went that way, except that's what I thought, because that's how games work. But nope, they want me to get lost, so I, I learned some sort of lesson, and that it's in the tone of the game that I'm lost. And I didn't like that. I felt like I was being pushed around that way a little bit. And that was my problem with it. And maybe the new game they're coming out, I mean, that's almost out, I think, this year, I think. Yeah, I think it's really soon um maybe they address some of that so i don't feel that way maybe not but i also just hate bugs like to be clear so oh yeah if you don't like <laughs> not, bugs. not only like i'm not on a kick i don't want to exterminate them all or anything like that this isn't starship troopers i don't want a only good bug is a dead bug or anything <laughs> like that but yeah uh i just don't find bugs interesting or appealing in any way shape or form uh and so to me, like every enemy was just like, okay, what part, what is their white mask going to look like? And how is their body lines going to look on this one? Oh, this one's big. Mm. This one's thin. Mm. This one's pointy. Like it just, I'm sure there are people that thought that that was wonderful and whimsical, but I just, every time I looked at it, I was like, Ugh, so boring. Yeah. You want big Dracula colors and crazy alucard bullshit and all that yeah. yeah i know what you're saying i think that's fair yeah. you gave Playing it a shot prime remake or remastered yeah hey I they're putting uh metroid I wanted to get my switch out the second greatest uh i'm sorry it's my favorite so my favorite metroid game is coming to their stupid online thing next week it's uh or is it next month whatever it is oh, the gba one yeah Ooh, metroid right. the, prime uh... Uh, or sorry metroid of uh, what's wrong with me fission fusion fusion why did i say fission fusion i love fusion so much i already have it so i'll play it wherever i have it but um it is so creepy it's so i good. love how scary that game is yeah. for a game boy game yeah. like i in a million years i never would have thought like a game boy game would freak me out but there i was yeah fusion has got its moments man it's a great game oh my gosh i love fusion just mechanically it's tight if they got they have better way of handling the can, cannon with controls than they did in the SNES game, which is an amazing game. Super Metroid's amazing. But Metroid Fusion, mmm, tasty. Tasty, tasty. That's another one I didn't want to like because I thought the new suit looked stupid. 
Oh, I love the new suit. That blue. That's, oh, it's so but I cool. liked it in spite of it. You liked it anyway. All right. Fair enough. I really actually, if you want my favorite uh, Samus suit, it's the it's in the new one. The the initial like blue, white, and red. Oh, well, that one is Samus cool. Suit. Yeah. I love the look of that. I like that too. Yeah. Metroid. What are you gonna do? Bo, it's time for you to oh, any additional thoughts on season twenty eight of Diablo three? Uh Bo, well, yeah. So that's great, uh great time, good time, best time. It was great. Yeah, I guess we pretty much talked about it. I played season twenty eight of Diablo three, all through of rights. It's the best time to get in to get your feet wet before Diablo four, whether or not you're gonna play the beta. The altar of rights tree is pretty interesting. One of them is it changes the level requirement of all items to one, meaning all you got to do is get one character to level 70, and then you can level up all the alts, like, in 20 minutes. Oh, jeez. You, you give them all level 70, just whatever gear, and set it to Torment. I think six is the high you can go when you're level one, and just blow through it, make an alt for every character. Super easy. That's a big one I recommend. Mm -hmm. Another one is just, um, there's a lot of convenient ones that lets you pick up, like, um, your pet will turn all the yellows and blues into mats right there, so you don't have to pick them up and bring them back to town. And just, like, they just turbo process everything right in the uh, right in the battle map. So it, like, makes just farming and running through things, like, insanely um, uh, easy and quick. Mm. Mm. It turns Diablo into a chore core game, basically. That's the joke I wanted to make. Oh, very nice. At a certain point, all I'm doing is running and farming items, converting them, trying to get ancient items. Oh, here, and here's a little tip for everyone, because this was never labeled anywhere. You know about these ancient, uh, primal ancients? They're these red turbo items. You can't get them until you complete a Nephilim Rift, I think it's level 70 or 80, somewhere in the 70 to 80 range, you get your first one guaranteed drop. Mm -hmm. It's red, it's an ancient, which means it has additional stats and it rolls max stats. Primal ancient. So when you're looking at the leaderboards, it's like, man, these guys get lucky. They get the primal ancients they need for their build. Well, there is a recipe that allows you to build it, which I always knew was there, but it takes a hundred primordial ashes. And if you don't look into it deeply, it sounds like you need to break down 100 primal ancients. Now, the drop rate on a primal ancient, so it's like, I don't know, it's like 2 to 10% for a legendary drop at a high farming Nephilim Rift. It's 1 in 400 on top of that. Oh, geez. Jeez. So it's really, really rare. I've gotten up to 6 so far in my time played, so you know, it's not like you don't get them. I've played a lot this week and I have to stop because I want to get back to doing other things in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I put in a solid 30 hours, I think, of playing Diablo 3. But um, when you break one down, you get 55 Primordial Ashes, not one. So oh. all you got to do is get two of them, which isn't, you know, it's still a, a farm, but mm -hmm. it's not an insane slog. No, it's not crazy. And I finally, the, the, the Primal Ancients have been around forever. I, fi I didn't realize you get 55 whole mats because usually everything else in legendaries, you yeah, get one to one. three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I felt ripped off and, and cheated from previous times I played with Primal Ancients because then you can you just you get two Primal Ancients, you can reforge it into a Primal Ancient you want and then start your build if you're pushing, which you know years ago I would have appreciated when I was trying a little harder on that front. Don't you don't you feel like this system would have been nice about two years ago, three years ago, something like that? Well, it trivializes the shit out of the game. I mean, yeah. they're one step away from just turning God mode on. Like it's you know, <laughs> like I said, enjoy I the level... end of Diablo three. You're all invincible. You kill everyone. Yeah, season twenty nine God it, mode. It, it, it gives you a fun little checklist to revisit the game. You know, it's like a tour. Yeah. I got to 70, I think, within a couple hours, even on my main guy, because you can you don't have to be 70 to start unlocking little perks that help you level faster, and some of the perks are ridiculous in terms of just the rate at which... Yeah. I think I went from doing... I started pretty much at Torment. I got my Hadrix gear, went to Torment 1, cranked it to Torment 10 almost right away, got a few perks, and I was, I was farming Torment 16. Wow. Within a few hours. Like, it's no problem. Like, everything's like paper now at Torment 16. I can get, I'm farming Torment 100 to 110 efficiently. If the efficiently is getting the rift done and clearing the rift in three minutes, 
So I can clear clear a one hundred in three minutes. That's impressive. But I, I need to I need to pivot on my gear to probably something that's a little more survivable if I want to push. And I think I'm at the point where I'm like, I did the altar of rights. I don't give a shit about the season journey. That they that the dumb it's achievement content's dumb. Um, so <laughs> that's optional. So I think I'm done. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So that's it. But you experienced it in a way that I think. Uh, I mean, it this was is nice what... to get back in. Looking forward to Diablo Four. Played a bit of Diablo Three. Yeah, you know, I think time. this is what they wanted too. They wanted like, hey, how do you feel about Diablo? You want to hop in here one more time? You want to try? Why is that coming up? Hold on a second. Sorry. Say goodbye to the monk. <laughs> what the hell happened? Sorry, a bitcher, Bo, a bitcher, a picture of Bo jumped up. Bitcher of Bo. It wasn't supposed <laughs> to be there. You're um, treating it like that. Do you have that on standby? I, I do. I have. I guess I had it in the display little folder thing, and I just forgot it was there. But I grabbed it. He's got a picture of me hanging around. I don't know why that's there. It's a great picture. You look like Jesus. Yeah, like it was a real glamour shot. Just like, ooh, hello, I'm Bo. In. Yes, hmm. that's our shot from me on the website. Give yeah, me my uh, oh, hello there. Face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, How are you doing? Anyway, what was the um, I was going to add right. something to that, and I forgot what it was, so I won't. I Point know. is, you... last hurrah for Diablo three. Oh yeah, we're, yeah, yeah. we're close fun. enough that it's time to to say we may never play this game again. It does feel like that's where we're at, and it's, it's nice, okay. It was a nice, it's a nice little send off if you want to go check it out. Uh, but I have a disease called Diablo three can't stop itis, so. Yeah, it's hard. It's like catnip for me. I can't stop playing. I know. I start. Just it's imagine terrible. what four is going to do to you. You're screwed, man. I know. I know. I know. It's, We're all screwed. Yeah. It's going to be great. I can't wait. Let's go. I, ha- I I have a weakness and fondness for Diablo that ruins my sleep. Diablo um, three, I always associate with why the initial push to why I uh, need to lose weight so badly, uh, <laughs> because hunts the wind and I. Yeah. Uh, stayed up until like four in the morning playing Diablo three together. Oh my god! And I stayed up late. I went through a like twenty four pack of Mountain Dew in one night. Oh wow! Nice. And that was <laughs> I had been on a diet and I had been good on the diet and that was the end. That was that, the end of that it. Was, that was that was a wild that cheat night day. with Hunts the Wind was the end of the diet and it never came back. Wow. That's a lot of that's a lot of diet or um it and it wasn't a diet or zero very right it unhealthy was like... night in so many ways <laughs> that's so bad every bad decision that I could have made was made and uh, that was it Not for playing Diablo three I mean playing a Diablo three that much was not probably what I should have done. No, 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 but just the choice of game you know yeah. I had two cans of Dr Pepper Zero today and I felt guilty. Now I don't feel that bad. I feel better because that's yeah. a lot, John. Twenty-four freaking cans of yeah. I'm pretty sure because I, I, I'm that's pretty hard sure to get I, through. Twenty-four cans is a lot of that's a lot of liquid. Yeah, it's like thirty yeah. grams of sugar each one of those. You it know. was not. It was not a smart day, and like that, it went early in the morning. But like, it was literally all day. I woke up and it was the first thing I started doing was playing yeah, I Diablo. Can't, I can't judge the sugar part. I've ripped a whole jar of Nutella in one go a couple times in my life <laughs> by the spoonful. <laughs> like a bear with a honey pot. I'm just like, Jesus, I can't have the, Nutella's banned in the house. Yeah. Yeah. You have having like, that around. Dangerous. I can't stay. I can't keep it around. It, I'll spoon it out. Yeah. Into my face. I do it's this with cans why of Pringles. I love Diablo 3, but I feel a little guilty every time we talk about it. Like, I get that pang of, like, <laughs> you it's did your shame something. game. Like, it's, it's the telltale, it's the telltale heart. Like, we start talking about Diablo 3, and I just hear, boom, 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 boom. It's probably my heart dying. It's your heart dying from that. What night. I did to it uh, playing Diablo fine. 3. You got, you got a strong do proof heart. Yeah, you're a do proofer. <laughs> Hey, uh, I really like Hunts the Wind, too, so that's a pretty good day to hang out with him. I like that guy. Yeah, it was great to play with. A couple other people cycled through, but it was me and Hunts the Wind. We were the only ones that went till, like, four in the morning. Hunts, I think, listens to this show still, so you probably hear this, but he's like a storm chaser scientist guy. So oh, nice. when there's a hurricane, he's up like in Helen a plane, Hunt. like, doing tests in the eye of the hurricane, above the hurricanes. His like hurricane season, he's up in the air doing that stuff all the time. Is the craziest job. I have mad respect for that guy. He's... He also has like the greatest like announced voice you've ever heard. Oh yeah, yeah. 
Like, he should be in radio. And it's his normal voice. You would think he was putting on a show, like, when you heard his segments on the instance or whatever, like, it, you would think, like, oh, this guy's putting on a an act yeah. for Scott's show. But then you meet him in real life, and you're like, hey, Hunts. And he's like, oh, hello. Yeah, and it's the like, same guy. Oh, my gosh, that's his normal voice. It's so good. Yeah, when he used to do the little segments on the instance, I loved those. Cause, and you're right. He sounds like he sounds. Like, that's just the guy. And he's just, he's a total sweetheart. He's a great guy. Uh, it started. He also had no nobody had DPS like his hunter. His hunter, yeah, that's true. which is why he was. So hunts the wind double meaning. Uh, he literally hunts the wind for his job. Mm-hmm. And then he also has this hunter called hunts the wind who had max DPS every time you raid with the guy. I don't care what the chart He's said. The he, was ahead, he was ahead of everybody else. It's unbelievable. The only time I've ever heard hunts the wind mad was when he was not on top of the DPS charts <laughs> and like genuinely <laughs> upset about it. Yeah, that sounds right. It's a competitive feller. If you hear this, Hunts, uh, reach out. I want to get you on TMS again and talk about storms. It's so much fun to hear that stuff. All right, let's move on. Uh, Bo, Mighty Doom. Uh, okay, so yeah. I tried to download this last week. It didn't work because you got to be Canadian, Singaporean, or I think New Zealand er to get it. Um, <laughs> Singaporean. <laughs> or whatever you say. What, do you, what is a Singapore? He's like total confidence for Singaporean, but then New Zealand er. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you say Singapore, Singapore, Singapore country, Singapore, well, Singapore is Singapore. Singapore, yes, they're called Singaporeans. Singapore is a country. Oh, it's a country, right? Yeah. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. But if like you say you're an American or you're a Canadian or you're a European, what is a Singaporean? <laughs> Singapore is I was I right? I'm not <laughs> saying you were wrong. It's just like you did the you did Singapore. the hard part with such confidence, and then you got to New Zealander and you stopped. You were like, you're like Singaporean and New Zealand. Yeah, it's the Singaporean sure. people. Sing- Singaporean, Koreans. Yeah, there it is. Like Koreans or, or uh, Chinese. It's like Korean, but Korean. It's like poor Koreans. Yeah. <laughs> Russian Russian errands. I don't know. Uh, that might be racist. Maybe I shouldn't say. It. I, I don't know. If you don't know the full context. The okay. point is, all these people got it, but we didn't get it yet. We don't get it till middle of this month or something. So, so you said you had it right, Singaporean. Yeah, I got it. I nailed it. I don't think you're saying it correctly, Bo. Yeah, it's not Singaporean. Singaporean. It's Singaporean. <laughs> Singapore. <laughs> no, I'm saying it like Korean. Yeah, you're going. If you say Korean, why wouldn't it be Porean? Seringa, Seringaporean. <laughs> Singapore. <laughs> we all have a skeleton. Why don't we just deal with it? It's, it's, it's also the Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yeah, Mandalorian. Mandalorian. Yeah, that's Mandalorian. Good. Oh, see, so Sing- Singaporean. Singaporean. Yeah. Think about it. It just feels wrong. I don't know why. Bill <laughs> got disgusted with that. He was like, "Yeah, he didn't like it." Singaporean. You're better with Singaporean for some reason. So it's it's, it's not Korean then. It's Korean. No, it's Korean. 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 Yeah. Or if you're talking about Korean, lives in a black and white world where Uh, it's spelled the same. It has got to be pronounced the same. (laughs) I'm being silly. I'm just highlighting. I get a lot of shit for skeleton skeletal, right? Yeah. I love that. Korean. Mario. Mario. (laughs) Yeah. Is it Ferengi or Ferengi? Oh wait, did we determine? Uh, what was the thing I saw? Was uh oh pasta Korean. and pasta? What's the deal there? Pasta. It's Korean. Korean pasta. Yeah, pa- We say pasta. 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 Yeah, we say pasta. You say pasta. Yeah, we say pasta. It's fine. <laughs> I mean, we say pasta, but we have to try. <laughs> if we're, if we're not paying attention. Like people will put on airs and be like, "We're having pasta tonight." And like, oh, you remembered to say it right? Is this the but one? If you catch someone, like if you drop a. If you drop a brick on someone's foot and they go, holy pasta, then they'll say pasta, not pasta. So we say it like... Might be, it might be a regional thing. I had an ex-girlfriend whose family uh, were English and they would say pasta all oh, the time. Oh, they would say pasta? And I always thought it was very quaint. They're like, we'll go out for pasta. And I was like, oh. It's cute when they say it with an accent. <laughs> nice. Right? When they have an accent, it's fine. This is how we yeah. say it. Hold on. I'm making dinner. I'm. No, that's not it. Hold on. Okay, here's, here's Bo's way. 
The pasta. They loved it. The sauces. They're great. The cooking. So easy. Introducing McCain Pasta Magic. And I don't even know what McCain no, is. No, I don't like this. What's this ad? It's That's a commercial not... for It's a Canadian McCain's. commercial for Pasta Magic by yeah. McCain's. Yeah, McCain's is oh. a popular brand up there. McCain's That'd be like... is a big brand in Canada. You don't have McCain's? Mm -mm. John McCain's? No. no, we just had, we had John McCain. For yeah. The McCain's Pizza Pops are <laughs> superior <laughs> to the Pillsbury Pizza Pops, for sure. We had McCain for a while, but we don't have him now. Mm. Um, yeah, so pasta. I'll live with it. It's fine. It's okay. But the important thing is Doom. What's this called? Doom. Mighty Doom. Mighty Mighty Doom. It's a, you know, we talked about it last week. I, I don't have much to add except it's fun. I want to play a lot, you know, while I'm watching my Star Trek. It's a nice phone to have a phone game. You know, not big on the phone games, but it's a nice one. Mm -hmm. I keep wanting to, to play it. But it too, like we discussed the Genshin Impact, has a energy system i can play i got four quarters for free mm -hmm. and then it wants me to pay to play more and it's just a complaint i don't have much to say except i don't know if you make games if you fund the making of game i don't know if you're about stop just stop mm. just please stop this practice of not letting me play your game unless i put money into it i hate it yeah even all the like it has the genshin impact like uh, gotcha, like get three shotguns, make it into a green shotgun, get three shotgun, green shotguns, make it into a rare shotgun. Like I hate all that stuff too, but I think the biggest sin, like John said, is preventing me from playing your game just cause money. Yeah. Like it's gross. I and tried the, I, tried I actually the... really like this game. Yeah. I really like doom. It's a, it's a Nova Scotian developer. Alpha dog is working with Bethesda to make it. So there's like a Canadian connection. Nice. Um, I, 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 I want to play this. I, it, stop preventing me from playing your game, your little phone game. Like it's ridiculous. Not that good. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, who do you think you are? Like, just, <laughs> the worst part is like stop pay, people paying for energy. Like they must make money at energy. I wish, wish it would just all stop. It makes well, me cry. Okay, so, so I bleeds. you know how I told you there was. I think I mentioned it last week. There was a Tomb Raider version of one of these games, like this whole yeah. uh, vampire survivor style control and all that. I played it. It doesn't. It doesn't even. This looks like it plays better than that, and I couldn't get over that. It bugged me, so yeah. I quit playing it. This video you're good. showing, he's a little overpowered than what you might be doing at your hardest difficulty. Like he's just rolling over everyone. Yeah. It has that combat when it's feeling the best. It has that combat like all the enemies behave differently. Run away from the pinky, kill the sniper. Like it's not really truly a survivor's game. It feels like Doom, but top down. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, you know, it's all, it shoots. You don't have to press a shoot button. That's as much as it's like survivors where yeah, you don't yeah. have to press anything to shoot. Sure. It just goes and it makes it it's fun. It's a fun little casual game. I want to play it. I want like doing the progression mechanics. Um, and the levels are cool, you know, but and it's all the sound effects and music are great, but don't make me pay. Don't do energy. It's stupid. Yeah. Energy's yeah. for Take dummies. Your energy and stick it in your doom pipe. Doom you know ball. what Bo just made me realize I forgot to put in the news? We what? all forgot to put in the news? What? Deep Rock Galactic Survivor Game. <laughs> oh, yeah. I forgot. Oh, yeah. I'm actually yeah. looking forward to this. I know there are some people poo-pooing it on site. I will play this. I'm not going to say I it's going to be the it. greatest thing ever. I'm totally going to play it. I get it. my unswavering un, un, un sport. I don't care. It's Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah, it's yeah, Deep Rock. He's going to go rock and stone and then kill shit. and then maybe You'll hear about it if it has energy in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then there will be complaints, but that's literally the only bar. And we don't know. That's the problem is they haven't said whether this is coming to... Well, I don't even know if it's mobile. I think it's just desktop. But it, whatever it is, they haven't said whether it's free to play, whether it's like if a $5 it's game. If it's them, I have faith it will not be monetized in too shitty of a way. Like, they're still for I Deep agree. Rock Galactic. Yeah, they're putting I out I... packs where it's like... They they don't even they don't even dress it up. They, they call them support packs. Like you buy this to support our development team. And yes, we're yeah. giving you items in the game, but that's not what you're really buying. Yeah, everyone I, understands that it's optional. It's fine. You're right. They they handle it tastefully. I we, agree. These guys are have complaints. With these them. guys are great. And when as soon as I saw it and then realized, oh wait, is, it, is this like a Diablo? Like what are we doing? Oh, I tried to set this up in VR and I have a crash that happens. Oh, the game itself. Deep, Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah, it's like a rare crash that they haven't figured out why it happens. That was so sad. Oh, it happens only. So you got the rare crash. Yeah, like thing. I rolled like I rolled a one on. Boo. VR mod, and I don't know how to fix it, but I'd be playing Deep Rock Galactic like gangbusters. 
VR. Deep Rock is great. And you can play with non-VR people, so we can all just play and I can be in my stupid world. <laughs> John doesn't like it. It won't affect him if we're is playing Is Bo together. playing in VR? Yeah, I know, dude. That'll be in some un- <laughs> unreasonable crap. direction. <laughs> Stuff like that. That'll be great. Uh, <laughs> let's move right. on. Anyways, Where... Let's just move on. That's a quick complaint. I hope the devs listen and fix it. I'm sure um, they will. Last thing is, uh, you know, I haven't so Diablo derailed most of my week when it came to this stuff, but I know people like to, or I like to sh- do a little show and tell and check in. I don't have any th- updates for Super Lake Run or any personal projects, but uh, maybe just wanted to show like some of the fun stuff. Oh, and to highlight something. Um, so I've been doing lessons in Godot. Sorry, I should say what I'm talking about. Uh, I've been doing lessons in Godot, the yeah. game engine, as we've talked about. And Godot 4 was released. Now, just because it's released doesn't mean it's the it thing. Yeah. There's still a lot of stuff they got to add. It's, you know, a game engine. It's Nothing's perfect on release. But they did hit a milestone with a release candidate. Um, and the reason I bring that up is where I've been learning my game lessons from is a site called GD Quest. There's a popular YouTube channel. And they do a lot of great tutorials. And I, I bought some of the tutorials and I've been working through it. I think I mentioned that on a previous show. They're having a 50% off sale to celebrate Godot 4. Um, their major lessons will be updated to support Godot 4 eventually, you know, so, but right now you do them 3.5. Um, so if that's something you're interested in, there's a sale for, it's like till March 8th, not much time left. And, you know, I'm doing some free pimping of it because man, they're good. Yeah. So I'm just going to show too, like what I've learned to do using their exercises, you know, uh, last, uh, this over the past week here, I'll just open up my. It's me. It's a me. It's a me. Oh, there's some audio. code. I see um, some code. What is this one here? Yeah. Right. So, like, it'll like I programmed this turret to to fire. So it evaluates whether I accomplished the goal correctly. Uh, so I programmed code in oh, there to have okay. it rotate. That's cool. And and you know detect when something hits the collision circle, which you can't see like outside. Yeah. And then fire a rocket. It's using shaders to do the rocket trail. Um, you know, it's calling in an instance. So like, you know, I, I'm still just working and learning and it's, I find it, you have to do the work. It's, it, the, but it handholds you pretty well. Like it teaches you the concepts almost too slow, but <laughs> it's nice, uh, given the, the small amount of time I have for these things. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's something I'd say there too. And I also just wanted to showcase one of the other things that I've been looking for is I bought this, uh, um, it has the code underneath, but it's demos for how a lot of the major nodes work in the game and normally it's an $80 box price for this but uh you know as an example like if you want to learn how 3d camera works it has these little demos that you can play around in oh, yeah look at that um so it just shows you know the main meat is under in the code that you're buying to learn but it has actual full tutorials of the behavior when it's working right and you can sort of um, work on it so this is showing how the camera can push in and detect with collision um, this is how you do screen shake. So this thing is shooting at me and then it shows how to do some screen shake and et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's really neat stuff. Um, oh, this one shows how do it changing field of view when you're sprinting has like a, a speed effect. So you see here, if I hold the shift button down while I move. Oh, it, it pushes and, out. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. And the idea is that like, it's, it's in the code. So like if I go back to the main screen, I can find like the demo I was looking at and see how they did it and figure out how that works and then apply it to your own projects as like a learning thing. Right. So that's awesome. Anyway, so just a little bit of show and tell on that front. And I wanted to mention because the sale is happening, you know, it's, if that's something you've been eyeballing or interested in or whatever, it might be worth looking, looking at the sale. Well, now that we're, uh, we're doing this, let's go ahead. World premiere the one of the first sound effects that'll be used for super lake run when it's finished okay here here it is you guys i think we're I mean, yeah i'm gonna need all your fart files i think at some point <laughs> i got a lot so whatever what you think need. that's the one i mean if you want like royalties i guess i'll pay them <laughs> i got a lot I need, I need your i need your fart library i need please. farts lots I, of farts. i have more farts than i care to admit uh, so as soon you as you're, do. I know you do. As soon as you're ready, I'm, I'm good. Yeah, uh, that's like again, that's the project more where I just practice things I've learned in it. But you know, it could turn into some. I agree. I had a vision because most of it's in the water, but I kind of thought for the up, we could strap a big metal diaper on my character uh-huh. and have it gun, and then it's like a, 
<laughs> you know, super soaker that shoots birds in the air with shit too. You know, I have big dreams. <laughs> I'm just like, oh man. <laughs> Well, they don't you guys, know. My, you don't even my know. ultimate goal in all of this is by the time Bo finishes Super Lake Run, yeah. I want to create a text-based story adventure just <laughs> called Lake Run so that he's literally the Super Lake Run to the original Lake Run. I love it. I love it. Let's get that going. And then can we make uh, Super Lake Run 64 after all this is over with? <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. That'll right. be that'll be all of us coming together to make the game. Awesome. Did you start anything, John? I know, I know John was no, I have pinging me with interest. Yet. Yeah, I fully go. support people and their game making passion. It's definitely not easy. I know. I still see in the Discord people. Look, I, I regret the comments about the vampire survivors. <laughs> well, I still say it looks like it was made in two days, but looks like okay. I know yeah, it wasn't we know made it wasn't, in two days. Obviously, right. But but you know, it's just it's fun to. When, tease and get reactions out of Scott people but this thing us, will not die yeah <laughs> when scott told us that there was going to be a uh, deep rock galactic survivor game i my first reaction to him was so that must be coming out in like a week right i can't imagine it would take longer than that <laughs> i know so i know it's it, been it's been hanging around me like a smelly fart that won't go away for yeah. months now. Every time it comments there, someone's like, yeah. that couldn't have taken more than two days. Yeah. <laughs> was like, no, it's a meme. It's a meme now. You're out, we're out of control of it. We don't control that meme uh, anymore. The people have it. I so. know, I know. But, you know, that's, I mean, that 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 meme is partially why I kind of, you know, reminded myself. Because I was learning C Sharp a while ago. Sure. To start picking up Godot because... If you have an appreciation for how things are, then you can make those jokes with a little more, you know. Yeah. Like, you seem like less of a jerk. That doesn't. Well, here's the good news. You have the understanding. Here's the good news. The three part yeah. studio is almost complete. We have Bo programming. We have a really good writer. His name is John. Plus, he wants to get into the programming stuff as well. And then you have a whole art department over here with me. We have the game mm -hmm. company. Let's go. Yeah, we have voice acting covered. We have all the voice acting covered. We, we have voice, we I bet even, you have sound effects covered too. I've got could, the, the Scott Library. We could probably talk Liam into doing some for you. You want to talk? You, you want to be so Liam? great? It's just the three of us doing voices and then professional Liam as well. <laughs> Do you think Leo, Liam wants to voice our poo game? <laughs> I think Liam, I bet you Liam, he's the nicest dude on the planet. He would I probably know. do it and do yeah. it for nothing because he's just nice. If not, um, I have a lot of Liam audio that we can just tweak and use words from. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm it, pretty we'll, sure we'll, that's not okay. <laughs> that's way that's down the river. Let let's get a working. Prototype we just need to get Liam point. yelling, Robert, 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 and then we're all done. Let, let's get a prototype at least in place, and then we can start asset planning. You know, because I, I guess I, there's part of me that wants the avatar to look better. There's a part of me that wants to have a Scott and John version, sure, so that you can choose your character. Or, you know, behind unlocks. Did Assuming you, get, you want to be portrayed with your pants off in a video game. I don't know. Did, did you guys it? ever, uh, did you guys ever see uh, the movie Olympus Has Fallen? It's the one where the White House gets attacked and Gerard Butler has to save the president and all that. Do you guys ever catch no. that? Well, there's no. a scene in it where Liam does some ADR and I'm going to just play a little bit. Hold on. Sir, there's movement in front of the White House. Literally, he got to be oh, a soldier shit, and say Liam stuff. Liam is such a distinct voice. It's I know. Funny. You hear it a mile away. I, think, I pick him out of everything, and I'm—I think maybe I just heard his voice too much from Heroes. But he probably hates it when um, I do this. I—I I, I never, I never ask, but he's—he probably hates it. I don't know if he hates it or not. I don't know if he likes it, whether I play this stuff or not. And then people who don't know any better, Liam and I have been friends forever, and and so this is like nothing for me. But it probably drives him crazy that. Like his Sean Connery. Listen to this. I suddenly remembered my Charlemagne. Let my armies be the rocks and the trees and the birds in the sky. I should have sent it to the Marx Brothers. <laughs> just, just got I think you kind of got a leg up on him because while he does a lot of audio work, he can't play audio clips of you. Dude. <laughs> no, he can. Of his job. <laughs> you can do it of him. It's just yeah. the nature of the profession. Yeah. To... He's, his banes are really good. Listen to this. I am the Frog Pants Network, and I'm here to fulfill Scott Johnson's destiny. So he just did all kinds of little things. So if we need, if he won't do it, if he refuses, because he's such a big shot now, 
we just take all this stuff and cut out all the words and make us a make us a Liam library and AI it. You know, well, we'll just train it on AI. We got this. No, I want the original flavor. I don't want AI yeah. Liam. Yeah, I want, we want, I want original we want brandy. Yeah, true, true Liam. True Liam. I bet we could get true it. Liam or no Liam at all. That's what we say. Yeah, true Liam or death is what is what we say. All right. Speaking of what else we say, we say it's time for a break. When we come back from this break, we are going to uh, do a dear Martha and talk about some more gaming news few emails some calls all this fun stuff is just waiting for you to come back in a second so take your breaks don't go do your peas whatever it is you got to do and we'll be right back uh all right i'm gonna kick it back into gear here Singaporean. Singaporean. <laughs> we're back everybody uh welcome back we hope you all had a lovely break because now it's time to do dear martha yes it's a thing we do where john takes an old magazine and we review it and we we have some comments and some thoughts about it I can already tell today is going to be super interesting, uh, given something I know about it. Anyway, John, uh, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right. My dearest Martha, do you want to be serenaded by overly loquacious sentimentality, caressing a series of comedy bits about gaming periodicals? Or do you want to get down to business? Because that's what this magazine is all about. SWAT Pro, brought to you by GamePro, is a magazine that ditches all that frou-frou garbage in other magazines and just tells you how to play games better, or cheat, which is the same thing to some people. Today we are looking at issue 16 from March of 1994, and as I said, it's a magazine about getting down to business. This is about as far from a Kotaku article as you can get. This is a 30 second long Elden Ring YouTube video where they tell you to get good and show you Melania's second phase moves one time because if you gave a shit, that would be all you needed. <laughs> it isn't a three hour podcast about video game company monopolies. This is a magazine that tells you to fight Chill Penguin first because it's free boots upgrade that basically makes the game play the way it should sooner. But how does this game magazine make you feel as a gamer? It doesn't, because it doesn't care about your feelings. It cares that you know how to properly execute Zangief's cheap spinning cheese driver in Super Street Fighter 2 The New Challengers. That's what it cares about. <laughs> What's that, Martha? Elden Ring clearly isn't talked about in a magazine from 1994. And the magazine weirdly tells you to do Storm Eagle first. Who cares? Here's some maps to Wolfenstein 3D along with boss guides. <laughs> but that's what this is all about, Martha. There isn't a lot to review here, because this magazine really is just codes, tips, tricks, maps, passwords, and of course ads. They do sneak some reviews in there where they can, but they are a short num they're short and number-based reviews, not lengthy write-ups. It certainly didn't run as long as GamePro, which is maybe a testament to being somewhat niche in terms of what it serves. If you don't own the games they cover, then there is literally nothing in the issue for you. Not to mention, tips and tricks just became less and less relevant as the internet became more and more relevant. Still, there's something awesome about the focus and execution of this magazine that I like. Anyway, for this week's ad, my hands were tied. Did you know they made a video game based on Bill Clinton's pet cat? <laughs> well, apparently they did. Nope. Sort of. There's the ad for Socks the Cat Rocks the Hill. <laughs> this game was made, but never came out. There were review copies released, so I'm sure there are ways you can play it. <clears throat> anyway, finally... You can play as the pussy that didn't cause the president to impeach himself. <laughs> anyway, I have to run, Martha. I literally ran out of time trying to find out if that pussycat joke would be okay to put in this letter. And I ran out of time to say anything else. <laughs> Yours in time, S. Beckett, 94. <laughs> uh, it's true, we actually had to test the audience that, that, uh, that joke before the show. And, uh... And the and all of the censors here that work here are so hard on core they approved it. I checked with my wife. It was like minutes before the show, and I went, 
Can I tell this joke on Gore? And she goes, it's very funny. I think you should, but I think you should check with Scott before I you I think it worked it. great. I think it still, it I, keeps I think, us. I think pussy's okay. It's yeah. still okay. <laughs> I won't take that out of context. Hold on a second. Let me just mark that. <laughs> uh, mark it. Yeah, marked, and we'll get to that later. Uh, nicely done, as always. I love that stuff. And now it's time for the news we didn't tell you. <laughs> Quick things today. Um, we now know that uh, what happens when Square Enix games actually underperforms. Uh, Forspoken kills the studio by being meh. They're yeah. done. They're done, right? Or they're absorbing them, or something. Yeah. So yeah. it's actually kind of a happier story than normally. You know, normally when a studio dies, it's like, all right, well, bye. Everybody lost their jobs. In this no. case, they are killing the studio because the game was received so poorly. Um, but they are they are pulling the developers in. They're they're not just firing them. Although I would be surprised if there weren't some people terminated from this. But in general, it sounds like they're folding them in. Um, but a real testament to how poorly Forspoken wound up doing. Did the game which... did the game get fairly treated in your mind though? I feel like everything was about um, no one likes how that girl talks, and they and no one talked about anything else. You know? Yeah, I don't think it was fairly treated. I think people talked about it like it was the worst game ever made. And I think by all accounts that I would actually trust that don't seem like they're just writing a, a hype bubble uh, or a negativity bubble, um, the game was kind of just meh. Just kind of average. You know, like, yeah. like I think people treated it like it was an F when it was really a C or a D. But, um, you know, like, it, it was a AAA game. That's what it was aiming for and sure. it hit real bad didn't didn't uh, succeed by any stretch of the definition uh also in the news dead by daylight is getting a movie and uh the verge hopes it becomes a dating sim i don't know why they're saying that but anyway because that's i guess the joke to make these days about dating sims because haha people like dating sims anyway uh dead by daylight uh horror game makes kind of sense if you're gonna make a horror game maybe you get a horror movie out of it a lot of these tropes are based on movies as it is and uh i don't know who's excited about this somebody is though and it might be I, good i'm know, not gonna you never know it. it's blumhouse which has a, a decent track record recently with with horror mm -hmm. um and they're actually getting into gaming that was a news story from a couple of weeks ago they want to do horror-based video games um it is kind of interesting though to think about like so dead by daylight is a game that has original characters in it um, but it's also been very successful on the back of michael myers the scream guy freddy krueger you know a bunch of licensed stuff um, Everybody but I Jason, would... basically. Jason was its own game. So <laughs> Jason didn't show up. They yeah. have a Jason stand-in who seems to be like the your main guy on the front. Wears a mask, big yep. suspenders, you know, this dude Jason right stand-in. Yep. Um, but uh, yeah, Jason's kind of the big outlier. But I, I would assume that this is all going to be original IP stuff and not some like... Marvel Cinematic Universe, where it's like, yeah, I was just thinking Michael Myers and the Scream Guy fight Freddy Krueger together. Yeah, I was just thinking that a Hulk versus Jason movie might be pretty awesome. Oh, hell yeah, right? But they'd never do it, but it'd be great. I would love that. Here's the thing, and chat rooms reminding me, but I also noticed this. I guess there is a Dead by Daylight dating sim. They did the little joke as well, like uh, Overwatch did, and they have a dating sim around the game. That's the reference. Not they weren't trying to just be funny. They actually have a dating sim. Somehow I missed that completely off my radar, partly because I'm averse to dating sims, but also wh who in the world would ever think Dead by Daylight had a dating sim? But they do. So there's that. Well, you know, you got to be up on the memes. Although I think it's safe to say that once Overwatch does it, the meme is dead. Yeah. I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken has a dating sim. If KFC is doing it, you know. We could make one after anything. Super Lake Run. We could do a dating sim. <laughs> oh my Poor gosh. dating sim. Yeah. We we should make genuinely like get into nightmare fuel territory and create a dating sim where people can date either three of us and just be brutally honest about our personalities <laughs> yep. and how we are yep. and show people what nightmares an actual relationship with any one of us would actually be. Yeah, no doubt. 
Uh, if have you... a match three puzzle game as part of it. Perfect. Oh, please. Like, yeah, I chose to go on a date with John, and he canceled three times and seemed disinterested the entire time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there you go. He really nailed it. You win the Just... game. Yeah. <laughs> he did. He that's did a win. It. That's, that's a win state. Like. Uh, uh, friend of the show and uh, former co-host on the instance and just been around forever jocelyn uh she uh, over at joss plays on twitch you should follow her she's a gigantic fan of the dead by daylight game and i wonder what her take would be on uh on a movie adaptation thing is blumhouse sometimes a little hit and miss their last film uh megan was a really good movie like yeah. legitimately funny and fun and exciting and scary when it needed to be highly recommend catching it. And it's on uh, Peacock now, if you want to watch it, but uh, stuff like that gives me hope that they could pull something like this off. And I don't know, people are in the mood for a good video game adaptation. Now last of us is raising the bar pretty high. So this kind of writes itself. Five survivors get stuck in a, a old cabin up for the weekend and have to survive till morning. Or else this killer is going to get him. It's sort put of put on a hook and pulled up into space to a spider god. That's right. That to the, oh yeah, I forgot about that bit. Shit. Can they even use that? Come on, that's going to ruin movie it. All about fixing generators. <laughs> uh, all right. So now I have questions about how they pull this off. Because you can't do your movie called Dead by Daylight and not have people dicking around with generators. Right? There needs to be at least some scene where someone tries to touch a generator and electrocutes themselves. Yeah, and alerts the bad guy because it's loud, which is the whole point. Yeah. And didn't yeah. get the little needle at the right place at the right time and they made too much noise. This is this is what I want out of this movie. We'll see how it goes. Uh also Final Fantasy fourteen. Sorry, nope. sixteen. Yep. <laughs> Something X. Something. Nothing makes me happier than putting Roman numerals in Roman the news numerals. because Scott them. will never get it right. I hate them so much. I just the Romans were wrong. They the whole civilization oh, it's died. ZV. 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 We should let their stupid numeral system die with them. All right, they're they're dead <laughs> people. Uh, anyway, Final Fantasy 16 uh, is said to be by Ars Technica quote a bold new direction for the series because they got a preview of it. I guess there's a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, around this thing it yeah looks... lots of people got previews and we're we're finding out more about the game and uh personally i think it looks super good it does look um, good um are you worried at all about uh well you like you you kind of like the direction they're taking with action combat as opposed to turn-based stuff right You're i cool. did not like that that was the direction we were moving in i'm i am definitely a purist i like turn-based combat but i did come around on final fantasy 7 remake and i will also say they have the guy who did the combat for devil may cry 5 mm working on this project like they didn't just go well we're gonna take a stab at action games now like they brought in somebody that knows action games to do it yeah. and that has given me a lot of faith that it's going to be fun so i'm willing to try it like i i i think that a game that's not because this game feels like it's deliberately trying to step away and evolve final fantasy I think where you get into difficulty and where I kind of butted heads with Final Fantasy VII is it's pretending that it's this game that was a turn-based game, but now it plays like an action game. Yeah. This game is saying, no, it's, this is an action game up front. Like, that's how it's going to play. That's what it's designed around. We're not going to do some fake turn-based mode to put into the game to pretend otherwise. Like, this is what it is. And I think that that will work to its credit. So 15 is already think, that, right? 15 plays like that, sort of. Sort of I don't know. 15 is the only one I've put zero time in. I've never played 15. That's weird. I played more 15 than you have. That's a thing I never thought I'd say. Yeah. I didn't play that much, but at least three, four hours. And it and the combat in there was very real time, but I don't remember if it had like slow down time or if there was any kind of like, uh, you know. Not not fake turn based, but just the feeling of of tactical choice making in the in the thrush of action. I was, I don't remember yeah. how that went, but um yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what this is uh, like. If you own a PlayStation Five, you'll be good to go. <laughs> it looks incredible. One of the interesting things that did come out of this was uh, Yoshi P said that um, a lot of people in Japan find the term JRPG offensive. 
Yeah, that, um, that surprised me to hear that. Which uh, I was surprised too, because I didn't necessarily think that, I, I always just sort of associated it as a classification, but he said that for a lot of people it was interpreted when it first got used that it was like, oh, it's not a real RPG, it's a JRPG, and mm. that a lot of developers still hold that context when they hear it, that it's a dismissive thing. Oh, so I did think that was interesting. That certainly popped off on our Discord as to whether or not that was like real or not but um, yeah because we i think we all see it as a as a positive not a pejorative um but it doesn't matter if the culture it's, there's other I think, things. I think it depends if you like the genre because there's definitely distinct yeah um there's distinct like i don't know if you want to call it pillars of design or whatever right. when right. it comes to something out of japan there isn't a Dragon Age Dragon Age Origins that was developed in Japan. Oranges. You know what I mean? Oranges. Did you say Dragon Age Oranges? Yeah, yeah. I might. I'm a little tired. Dragon <laughs> Age Oranges. <laughs> There's no Dragon Age Origins style, you know, or Baldur's Gate style game. It's just we label it that because I'm I'm interested in Dragon because you said Dragon Aids first, so Dragon, <laughs> Dragon Aids, Aids oranges. oranges. I want Dragon Aids oranges. That's what I want. Anyway, but you make a good point. It's not a Western RPG. That was the distinction, right? But most people, yeah. they hear JRPG, and it's like a classification so you now know what it is, and you have some assumptions about maybe turn-based stuff or you know, a certain age of game, at the very least. But then, if that offends them or felt like they were saying, well, that means you're off on the side doing your own thing and you're not a mainstream RPG. I, I could see why they'd feel that way, but yeah, I, I think it has meant multiple things for me over the years. Like when I was, you know, growing up on secret of mana, chrono trigger, final fantasy, super Mario RPG, like JRPG was a beloved term for me, mm -hmm. but I think there was definitely a switch where it was like, you know, now I'm playing elder scrolls and <laughs> dragon age oranges and stuff like that, where like JRPG <laughs> would have been, a thing that kind of pushed me away from it because I was like, no, I like this sort of thing. Um, but I mean, it, it is an interesting thought. They RPG they, is such a bastardized term, anyways. Like, oh yeah, it's true. It's, it's virtually. True. I go to Steam and like give me RPG games. It's like here's Tomb Raider, and I'm like, yeah, you're playing the you, role you of Laura Croft. <laughs> like, when, during that transition, like an RPG game meant something akin to a D and D, even if it was right. different. Like Final Fantasy would have counted turn based combat, yep. mm -hmm. like something that felt like pen and paper. Right now, uh, everything's an R Assassin's Creed Valhalla is an RPG, and it's like yeah. yeah. I remember yeah. Legend of Zelda getting classified as an RPG and going, what is this? Yeah, what that's are we doing? really shouldn't that's be offended because JRPG is kind of meaningless because they also have a wide you know there's a wide variety of RPGs from Japan as well. But I think back in the day it meant like Final Fantasy or something in that vein. You know? Yeah, we should all be offended that we're trying to classify anything because like Dragon end, Quest, it's, it's all its own menu thing. based. Everything should stand on its own. You know, that's how I see it. Uh, all right, more news. Uh, the uh, uh, Square Enix news: President Yosuke Masuda is going to be replaced. Yep. Because of that damned Forspoken game. No, I don't know why they're doing it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so He's this an just, NFT guy, isn't he? This just came out. Well, yeah, he is, but his replacement is also an NFT guy. Uh, so if you were really, that. if you were really hoping that the era of Square Enix NFTs was coming to an end, um, I mean, you never know. Like the guy could get in the role. The guy who's replacing him um, is, maybe, is he just retiring? Like is this actually no? There, this was a board. Uh, I guess um, the way it works in Japan is at the start of the fiscal year, they announce their intentions yeah. for the year, including position changes. And the board was like, yeah, we think we should have a new president by the end of the year. Yeah. So that, that has been announced and it's going to be Takashi Kir Kiryu. I don't know why I had such a hard time with that, Kiryu. but uh, Takashi Kiryu. That's who's going to be replacing them. Traditionally has been kind of down with NFTs and blockchain technology. So maybe lessons not learned, but we'll, we'll see. He could come in and go, you know, everybody really made fun of us for this. What if we most didn't? The most important thing is what does Yoshi P think? Yeah, what is Yoshi yeah, P? Yeah, we got we, we to ask Yoshi P what he <laughs> I don't know what this means, but if Yoshi P says it's okay, then, then fair enough. New guy is uh, supposed to be 48 years old. Uh, I don't buy it. I think he looks... No, 20. he looks 20. He looks 20, he 21. Looks, he looks like he just showed up. 
Um, he looks like the definition of the like guy who did super well in school, but now is in the real world mm -hmm. and is in over his head a little bit. And he's a little arrogant because he did so well in school. I've constructed a whole narrative in my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, you got but... a whole story to tell, which is probably better than Forspoken Story is the whole point. You know, I will say to um, Matsuda's credit, like I'm pretty sure this is right. I believe he's the person who is responsible for Final Fantasy XIV getting fixed instead of getting abandoned. Yeah, and as much well, as people might meme on NFTs, which I agree is a stupid thing that he's doubled down on, and Square Enix makes a lot of dumb decisions. We've we've talked about a lot of them. Yeah. Um, but he, I'm pretty sure he was the guy in charge for the, like, hey, do we abandon this project or do we actually fix it? And deciding to, like, go with fixing it yeah. when it was suggested so it's not all bad you know people can make good decisions and bad decisions but this is what's coming yep for sure final bit of news jack black dressed up as bowser getting ready for that mario movie and then had a wardrobe malfunction that required censoring because he showed his wiener by accident yeah Wait, what? So How you Baby like that? Bowser confirmed for the movie. Yep, then. Baby Bowser. Or, but what's the kid Bowser's name? Where did he show his penis? Bowser Jr.? It was in an event. Let's see. Um, uh, let's see. He pranked the cast. He showed up in a Bowser outfit while they were doing oh, an the, interview. The Link has some video. It's on the Kelly Clarkson show. Yeah. Um, let's see. Pulling it up. I'm just, I don't think we can see it because I don't think it'll show it. But <laughs> Yeah, I don't think YouTube's like, yeah, let's show you. <laughs> Yeah, but he came out and was like just jerking around and his buttons came undone and his wiener flopped around. So good job, oh, Jack Black. Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty. <laughs> that's I like think it's everyone's great. nightmare. I think it's great. Wait, I... So the seam burst and he wasn't wearing underwear? I, I think I think so. It's, it's blurred. And what I saw, so all I see is yellow. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what there's, it looks there's, like. a hairy, there's a hairy pile of gonads right there. Yep, right there. Big pile. Do you think he did it on purpose or no? I don't know. I hope not. I mean, I don't know. I mean, if he did, he, well, whatever. Jack Black's a pretty. He's up for fun. He's a good fun yeah, guy. I'm just. I'm. I need to research this video. I want to see. Uh, it you want more? more? <laughs> There's probably an uncut well, version I need, somewhere. We need to see. Like, yeah. They're all pretending like nothing happened. Yeah. Well, they have to. Well, I don't know if they saw it. The camera did. They may have been like. How can you not see a gonad? <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> How can you not see a gonad? He was literally, I, I'm watching the video, he's literally uh, undulating with his hips, pushing them out. They probably he, did. I, like, you know, pink, I assume his ball sack's pink. There is no way brown. he intended this, but I don't think he's probably super bothered by no, it. No, he's probably okay. Um, let's see, where did he come out? There he is. I mean, I, I feel bad. It, w it wouldn't be that I'd be embarrassed that they saw it. I'd be like, in, you know... How many people have I scarred with this thing that I've done? You know, like, yeah, there might be some people who've never seen a ball sack in the audience, and that was the first ball sack they saw. Could have been, and you know, that's and it's sad. for the big I family. Think, sorry, Jack. It's, it's for it's sad. for the big family movie of the year. So who who knows? I don't know. But we got wait. Has Nintendo said anything? Has he sued? <laughs> as far as I know, I love the idea that it's Bowser though. It's perfect. I mean, who in the in the pantheon of characters? Who's going to show you their wiener? Bowser. Name yeah, another I'm one. Trying to, I'm trying to find an uncensored. Picture. Yeah, good luck with that. I don't want to see. Like, it. I need to investigate this properly. I can't be censored. I mean, by the blur television. makes it feel like it never really happened. And I'm watching the video and nobody's acknowledging it. You know, they're, they're, like, they're professionals, man. They got to keep moving. They know what happens when, when somebody's balls come out. And the show out. made it through edits. Like, it made it through the editing bay because it was air. Like, this isn't live. Well, they aired it. It's live for that audience, and then they air it later, but I, they would have had time to edit that out. I don't think the televised version showed uh, Mr. Black Sack. I don't think that happened. Um, well, I love what GameSpot... VR, GameSpot, or not GameSpot. Yeah, GameSpot says this. Jack Black dressed up as Bowser and had a wardrobe malfunction that required censoring. The subtitle is, To promote the Super Mario Brothers movie, Jack Black dressed up as Bowser, and things got nutty. Do you see what they did there with that word, no, nutty? not good. Yeah. I know I laughed, but that was not. <laughs> I laughed. That's not that good. I couldn't help it. It's um, right. Also, it's like, okay. why are they censoring it? Like, if you have a show, 
and let's say it's recorded you're editing it to go live and you're like okay we got jack black like did, they noticed it because they censored it right yeah so they had one option they're like let's just not show the ball sack mm-hmm. or let's censor the ball sack drawing attention to it you know what, like isn't that a scrap don't you scrap that <laughs> don't you do a reshoot like what's going on well like, if you really like yeah leave it in no one's watching this shit anyways well i don't know if they had a second what do they do bring him back out but this time in pants yeah, yeah, it's a TV show. They can do it over again. Yeah, but the audience is there. I, mean, you know, I think they, they, they probably want to preserve the shock because the character, those guys didn't know he was there, so they were surprised by him being there, and they don't want to redo that. I don't what know. What I find interesting <laughs> is that Bose... It's so funny. They're like, now nah, leave it in. Leave the ball sack in. We'll just fuzz it up and not <laughs> we'll blur it. <laughs> I like that Bose read on this when it's blurred is he goes, it makes me picture that it was no big deal. And my read on it when they blurred is it makes me think it was a much worse deal than it probably was. <laughs> yeah. All I know is, I, I mean, I like Jack Black. All right. I like him. I don't yeah. want to see his junk. I, have no I don't desire. know. This bears more now. I was trying this very GameSpot hard to see his junk. I'm, I'm looking at the, the GameSpot information. They didn't go really deep on it. And I need to... I, I find it hard to believe no one in the, spotted the ball sack. <laughs> so, well, someone did because they blurred it, obviously. Well, I mean, on the camera, yeah, but just that there was a reaction. Like, Chris Pratt isn't like, dude. When I can... <laughs> it's like a you know, movie where draft. You know, <laughs> stuff showed, like that truck is uh, in the Lord of the me, Rings. Excuse me, Jack, we can see the Mushroom Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> see, John's got a good reaction yeah, right there. It's that's not bad. Beautiful. We can see the Mushroom Kingdom. Please, yeah. please cover your mushroom kingdom. I knew fungus was hairy, but my oh my! Yeah, I thought I was the. You know, that would have been perfect time for uh, Keegan Michael Keel or however you say his name to go. Uh, Keegan like Michael Keel. Not like that. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Ke- I don't know. <laughs> I'm not gonna try. I can't talk. Peel? <laughs> no, Peel's the other guy. Jordan Peel. And then Keegan. Keegan Michael Key. Key. That's Key. It's Key Shit. and Peel. Yeah, Key and Peel. Duh. That yeah. you're thinking. Uh, he's normally the little mushroom guy in the movie. He's 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 Toad, so maybe he should have. <laughs> sure, his, his nickname in high school is probably Kegels. Kegels. Right? I don't know why that would be. Yeah. Sure. Hey, you're that exercise people do with the floor of their vagina wall or whatever it is. Uh, <laughs> floor. The vagina known for its Boy. excellent floor. Who would have thought kind this of floor was thing. Story we could spend the most time on. <laughs> I had a friend in. In uh, college, she told me that it was to work out the floor of your. What? I mean, maybe, but oh, like okay. the wall. The floor like, of sorry, your. You stopped at the word floor, and I was like, "And you believed her?" Well, I mean, <laughs> like, it's supposed it's to been be a like, while, but it strengthens something. strengthens <laughs> the floor. <laughs> the pelvic floor is that what it is, Chad? Pelvic floor. Yeah, I'm looking it up. Pelvic floor. Pelvic floor. There you a Kegel go. exercises can prevent or control urinary incontinence or other pelvic floor problems. Here's a step-by-step guide to doing Kegel exercise yeah. correctly. Yeah, I do mine all the time. I just want to know how many people heard to stop, start talking about this and started trying it. <laughs> I just thought it was for sex, <laughs> not for <laughs> medical, <laughs> but apparently it's a medical Well, it strengthens no, the whole gotta, deal. It keeps your, keeps your pee working right. Yeah, but it also... Well, it's, maybe it's it was a... for dudes so that you could last longer, I think. Maybe oh, was really? The... Does it do that? I don't, I don't know. I probably read it in a Cosmopolitan when I was like 15, and it's just been stuck in there as knowledge, even though it's fake. Wow. Wow. Top 10 reasons uh, your Kegel floor. Kegel floor? <laughs> That's not it. Your Michael Keegan Kegel floor is not strong enough. All right, moving on. Let's do this. Uh, oh, we got you guys who have emails. This is great. I'm excited. That's a good question. Check this one out. This is actually uh, an email from Dark Squall. Uh, 0119 is his name. There's and so many women mad. <laughs> what, what, what happened? What? Uh, Miss Gadget's like, some days I really wish there was a woman on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. We're sorry. I apologize. I'll be honest. You know what? I would love to hear a female take on that. because I don't wish know. there was a woman on the show, too. Let's really? Like, people. that's the big thing we want women to write in? No. Keg- no, but I want to. I've never understood no, it. No, like... but we could be corrected instead of awkwardly just like stumbling. <laughs> For hours. <laughs> yeah, trying to figure out what a pelvic floor is. Do men have pelvic floors or just the ladies? I don't know. I mean, men can do it. <laughs> Silence is deafening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know enough. Yeah, it's chat GPT. Hang on. Oh, yeah. J- chat GPT will yeah, definitely that's know. that's guaranteed to be correct. Yeah, chat GPT today said that Scott Johnson has a podcast with his daughter, Kim. 
Like, yeah, the hello? male pelvic floor muscles support the bladder and bowel and affect sexual function. Kegel, Kegel exercises can help strengthen these muscles. Okay, so I'm not wrong. You can Kegel to affect sexual function. Okay, read, ask chat GPT if men have a pelvic floor. I didn't. It's I just... was joking about chat GPT. Oh, no, you didn't really I have it up. Google <laughs> Scott's like, I want to know from chat GPT. I'm going to find out what it says. Hold on. I have an account. Okay, here we go. I'm in. Um uh, do men have whoops have a pelvic floor? <laughs> uh, Chat GPT says blink blink blink. Yes, men do have a pelvic floor. The pelvic floor is a group of muscles and connective tissue that span the bottom of the pelvis, supporting the bladder, bowel, and in women the uterus. The men or in men, the pelvic floor muscles are involved in supporting the bladder and bowel and controlling urinary and bowel function. They also play a role in sexual function, contributing to the ability to achieve and maintain an erection and controlling ejaculation. Like women, men can experience pelvic floor disorders, such as urinary incontinence, pelvic pain, otherwise, which may affect the, their quality of life. All right, Chappy GPT, you did it. You got it. I don't know why it thinks I have a daughter named Kim and that we make a show called Frog Pants. Well, clearly it's just the one source we have to listen to, though. That's true. Not that I'm disputing anything it said. I'm pretty sure I've been saying all along that men can do kegels. <laughs> you were you were early oh, on that. Oh, kegels? Yeah. Wait, do you ba bagel kegels? <laughs> <laughs> you, just ba you just bagel kegels. It's, that's how you pronounce it, kegel. Is it kegel. That's how you say it. I thought it was kegels. No. Who yeah. says? Says you. You kegels. said, but you say beggles. I, I GPT. Oh what, how you pronounce kegels. Well, hey, we... John, Kegel. you say beggles, though. I've heard you do it. I know I say bagels weird, <laughs> but like, this is a different word, you guys. <laughs> I think it's kegels. Ke kegels. Keegan kegels. Michael Kegel. That's it. All right. I got a case of the kegels. This I got a morning. case of the kegels. <laughs> I couldn't control them. Yep. That sounds about right. All right. Here's what the email is. Hello, guys. This is a question for John. If you Thank could God. pull all of the Final Fantasy <laughs> games, what would be the best systems from the games you played? For instance, what is the best fighting system, best story, so on to make the best game? Go ahead to the lake real quick. I love you guys. Dark Squall. All right. So I think you understand what he wants. It's like, a, yeah, let's, yeah, let's like make an amalgam. Pieces. Right. What, what, is, what is the perfect FF game from those pieces and where do they come from? Well, I really like... I really like the ability to do job changing. Um, it's not in a lot of Final Fantasies where you can change your character's jobs, um, but I like it. And so for me, I would probably pull that system from uh, Final Fantasy 3 or from Final Fantasy 5. Uh, I really like... I think 6 is also, like, it's just a, it's a good package. Like, everybody feels like they have a job. Job does special things. I think the combat system in 6 is really good. I also think the story in 6 is really good. Like, mm -hmm. uh, from all the games I've played so far, I think 6 nails most things perfectly. Um, I also think that Final Fantasy 9 on a combat system is good on paper, but poor in execution. Mm -hmm. um, it's very, very slow, but the idea that your weapons unlock abilities and you can kind of tailor your abilities by, you know, powering them up and stuff like that is a really neat idea, but uh, it, I don't think it plays well in 9. Mm. So I guess... I would like to see a, a serious, like, world-changing story like what's in Final Fantasy VI. I would like to see somebody refine the Final Fantasy IX combat system into something faster that plays a little bit better. And I think that that would be kind of, like, the premium spot for me. But I'm also so excited for Final Fantasy XVI that I don't think they need to even pull from stuff in the past. I just want to see where they're going in the future. I, I cannot express how excited I am for this game after seeing more about it. Isn't it weird there's only been 10 between 6 and this one? That's weird. If you think what? about it. 16. Think of the math. Oh, 10 games? Yeah, 10 games since 6. Yeah, except that's not true at all. There's been like... Oh, with well, all the spinoffs and stuff, yeah. been like 20, probably. But of all your main liners, right? Like, your, se yeah. your proper n numbered sequels, it just is a strange... It's strange to think how short that actually is, but how long ago that was. That's just weird. It's weird to me. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, moving on to this text we got from Shanna Fan. 
a regular around the community, says, uh, I got a bone to pick with Bo. So we went from an email for John and a bone to pick with Bo. Here you go. Over a month ago, I gifted Bo the VR release of one of my favorite games, L.A. Noir. But he never thanked me. I oh, thought no. all y'all Canadians were nice. Joking aside, he says. I hope he has some uh, room in the backlog for it because two things. One, the game has mirrors, and two, it's in VR. Just imagine, says Shanafan. Have you uh, messed with that at all? That's actually a really um, cool yeah, game. Yeah, it's actually, it's still in my inbox. Just, I mean, look, I know I'm going to sound like a real schmuck here, but I got, I got gifted a lot of games. <laughs> it's just a giant list of guilt. Um, hang on. I think I still have this. In, yeah. All right, I'll do it live on the air. Uh, he sent this to me January 20th. Oh my gosh. Um, you received a gift. Your friend Shannon Fan has given you a gift. L.A. Noir, the VR case files. Love Core, also love L.A. Noir. Give the VR game a shot. Feel free to mention my name if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I think maybe you just want to get mentioned on the show. Maybe, show maybe but we did it twice. So you got to play I'm, that, who though. Are we, Elon Musk? You can't if buy it. somebody wants to, to send mark. me a video game, which doesn't happen often, apparently, compared to everybody else on the show. <laughs> I'm I will joking. mention your name. I will no, also hey, you fans game. never send me games. They accept the ones that want to watch me scream. They're the only oh, no. ones. That's I, get, I get stuff from like devs and like I'm on some lists or whatever, but I'm not. I never get one from like people. Bo is a man of the people. He's got yeah, like. Is it, oh, I already accepted it. Oh, no wonder he thinks I'm being a jerk. Okay. So I, <laughs> He's like, give me it. Yeah. I added it okay. on January 25th. Oh, like five days after. I just never thanked him. All right. Well, Shanna fan. First of all, in proper Canadian fashion, I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Go um, eat some pasta. And it is kind of real that <laughs> I've been gifted a lot of games, though, and I'm just like, okay, you know, I want to, I need to want to be in a good, anyways, whatever, I'm full of excuses. Thank you very much for the VR. <laughs> I think game. people just see Bo as a challenge. They want they want their game to be the one that gets through to him. They're yeah. like, yeah, they're like my game will be the one that Bo plays and mm -hmm. loves. Yeah, I feel awful when someone buys a game and I'm like, eh, don't I don't feel know. bad. Uh, you don't know, feel bad. It's got a war again with the gentleman or gentle lady who bought that for me. It's a great game, a lot of potential. I just don't feel like playing it, and I feel terrible. It sure? is unfortunate when you don't like the game. I did have someone buy me a game that I did not love. That happens sometimes, yeah. But and the game he's talking so about, this is actually rough. a really cool version of L.A. Noir. I've heard. I hear the VR in there is really good. Yeah, I I'm going to download it now. Um, that you know, game's cool, yeah. man. Nothing wrong with the L.A. Noir. I wish they'd have made more. Uh, it was such the, the, a cool yeah, tech. Yeah, I played the original L.A. Noir. I loved it. I played it to death. So, you know, Well, that's part of, your, part of your problem, probably, is you're about to play the same game again, you know? But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, it's been long enough. I mean, I just played Diablo for the five million thousandth time. So, yeah, I mean, that's you know. true. I want to do a slash play in Diablo. It'll be an ugly number for all of us. I think, I think, well, I thought there was a, a view where you could see your characters. It would show you your slash played per character. Oh, and you could do the math and add it up. That's scary. Uh, Yeesh. Yeah. There's also somebody on our Discord uh, was talking about a way to see how much money you spent on Steam. There's an exact yeah, like. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing. I don't dare. We've already. We did that no. a few years ago. We've already done. Did it. we? Did we do that? I was like 4K or something like that. Yeah, we've done it. No, I don't want to do it. Doing it right now. I don't want to. <laughs> Money's too tight right now for me to look at it and think about it. No, you know, especially be cool? considering how few of them I've played. They could get into banking. Uh, Valve could. They could say, "All right, you've spent seven thousand dollars on games on Steam." Uh, you can't have. Ac you need a four thousand oh, dollar yeah. loan. You don't have access to these games for a month or something and for that month you can have four grand to work with and once you pay us back you can have your games back plus interest. yeah this is easy to do um so if you go to yeah you can just do it when your account history it tells you how much you paid for things just drop it in an excel spreadsheet and yeah i don't want to do that some, yeah some, uh, we're not uh, going to do that i don't I ever want to do that yeah, well i'm going to do it now that we started this is good content so. <laughs> oh my gosh are you gonna do it now yeah. so we have a number i want to hear it we're, i'm working on it because these are canadian um, dollars they're a little it's a little squampus up there you know, with your weird. Okay, the only thing is, there are some credits on here, but it's tiny stuff. We'll get a ballpark, I'm sure. Okay. You know, selling trading cards and stuff like that. Right. I've never That's sold any of that stuff. I probably should. I did a lot of that. You don't make much. Yeah, I assume not. <laughs> Auto yeah. It's like I sold 18 things and right, I came using... away with 19 cents. <laughs> I'm using numbers. Do you remember precisely where? Oh, there's some. Okay. So um, while you're doing that, real quick, the the there's a rumor that. Team Fortress is getting a huge announcement soon. 
I don't oh, know what really? that means. Team Fortress 3, maybe it's an overhaul of 2. Maybe. <laughs> Wait a minute. Valve's going to make a game with a 3 in it? Maybe it'll... Hey, it could be the first one. And what if what if it's just Team Fortress 2? What if they saw what Overwatch did and they go, you know what? We'll just call it 3, but we'll have... And we'll have a new character or something... But that'll be the but will it be the same game and no one will notice? But we'll call it three. What if they still avoided the don't make anything with a three and they released the orange box two <laughs> and it had the team fortress, well, it the would new half life? But it would have to have uh, yeah. What would more it do? portal? Yeah, more. But they can't put a three. It's just <laughs> mortal. <laughs> mortal. <laughs> All right, I want this to happen, but I don't think it will. Sorry, I got to get rid of some text. Oh, they could do Team Fortress 2.5, Chad. That's a good one. 2.5 Team Fortress, yeah. I I have nothing but happy memories of my Team Fortress days, two and and prior when it was a mod, especially the Half-Life mod. I played that to death with friends and stuff. Nothing but happy memories. If they had a big comeback somehow and blew the roof off of whatever a third game would be, quote-unquote, I would oh be happy. Oh, my God. All right, Bo. <laughs> give, us, give us the number. G- Jesus is about to weep. Yeah. Is For it gross? This time. Is it gross? Holy Let's fuck. hear it. Let's see it. Holy... F- I got an F-bomb here. Go ahead. Let, let it out. After you. What the fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, wait. Fuck. Is it bad? Fuck? Like, I have $11,998. <laughs> It's like a down payment or a fucking car. <laughs> Holy shit. I thought it was in the 4K this is what, range. This is what you get for opening See? Pandora's box. Scott and I, I mean, ain't opening it. I think some stuff was gifted. I don't know if the gifted retail price. I'm sorry, but that's way more than... I think that's, I might have a problem. That's bad. <laughs> See, this is why you don't want to look at it, because you don't want to overthink it. You're going to overthink it. And I mean, then... it's since, you know, it's it's over a decade. Like, it's not... Yeah, since 2010, 13 years. So I mean, let's average it out. Where's my calc app? In the 90s, uh, this would have been twelve thousand your rent year. divided by 13 years is nine hundred twenty-three dollars a year. It's not, you know, it's, it's not less bad. Than golf, it's not less bad. Than golf membership. Yeah, you know if I mean? you were a golfer, yeah. golfing's a good example. If you're a golfer, you're spending 128 bucks a month or a week, if that. If you're at a crappy yeah. club, or you know, so, you're a skier. Like, there's a yeah. I mean. I don't want to add the fast food I've bought because I didn't feel like making dinner while I've been like, you know, eyeballs deep into video games. Because then I think that number, uh, we all do that. Blast my ass into two. <laughs> Basically, it's like kaboom. we all do that. But I can't look at this thing. There's no way. Yeah, this is. Uh, yeah. So, well, you know, I don't know if John has a bigger library than me, but I know Scott sure does. <laughs> I do, but a lot were giveaways, so I don't know how I would break those uh, out. Does it only yeah. count what I've paid for? Or will it count everything? I, I, I don't. I didn't audit. Hang on. Let me look, go back and see what the list looks like in. Because I get a lot of codes. Details view. It's purchase history. So let's see a game that someone oh, got. From, so knuckle. Bo- yeah. See. So um, knuckle bones. Oh no, that's a gift I sent. Oh, why is that being count? Oh, I bought it for knuckle bones. I paid money. That was the dead space mess up. Oh. <laughs> that wasn't my free copy. That was the extra copy. Oh right. Um, we had to send. Oh, you're supposed to so, tell us. So j- me and John pay a chunk of that. You never did. I mean, whatever. It's, I know, but you felt um, like it was your fault, but it wasn't. Okay, so yeah, I, I'm not seeing any gifts. So like, um, that gift I just redeemed, f- uh, January. Yeah. Of the VR files, not on the purchase list. So definitely, gifts are not counted in this list. <laughs> oh man! All right, I might and, feel uh, a little better about doing it if it doesn't count all that extra stuff because I I have two thousand. There's 30 games. nothing good about looking at this. There's <laughs> no, no, right. there's maybe, no world where maybe you I'll look tighten at the belt Scott. a little bit and go, do I really like I bought a game today. I bought Space Haven. And last week I bought Legacy of the Void. Or not Legacy of the Void, that's StarCraft. Yeah. Vault of the Void. I also bought Blasphemous. Why have I not brought them up in the show? That's three games I haven't played. Yeah, <laughs> but I bought them. Bought them and play them. Okay, but Space Haven. Did, did Space Haven exit early access or something? Why is? Oh, it's just on sale. Twelve bucks. I have this game. I wonder how that is now. I liked it when I first played it, but then there were some bugs and I got out. But Space Haven's like a proper like 
It's banished Shit. in space. It sounds like yeah. to me. I haven't played it, but it sounds interesting. It's still in early access, so I was waiting. But I got yeah. I got kind of curious. It's on sale, so I was like, let me pick that up. I'm you know, I out. pick things up, especially indie games. They're cheap. Maybe I'll play them. Maybe I don't. But a lot skip me, man. Yeah. Well, anyways, I'm not looking. I'm no. I don't feel bad about plunking the money down. I do. It's the big boy. You know, too many big boys, and that adds up real quick. Yeah. But I don't want to see um, anything that adds up that quick. I don't want to see how much. You know, I don't know. I don't feel but nine hundred dollars a year is nothing. It's fine. Okay, you're good then. You're good. All it's, right. It's, that's plenty. You know, I don't feel bad. Although, <laughs> doesn't count any of the Xbox or Nintendo <laughs> Switch purchases. <laughs> or you know, I'm probably already a grand deep in VR purchases on Oculus. So you know. Oh, easily, right? Easily. Except you're getting a lot it's, of these now. It's fine. It's still, it's fine. I think it's manageable. I don't feel bad. But when you just, it was like $12,000 almost. I'm like, holy smokes. What is Vault of the Void? It's um, a roguelike deck builder, but oh, it's kind of light on graphics. It's just more strictly card games, but it, it kind of goes deep on mechanics. I haven't played it yet. Oh, um, I see it. But this looks uh, all right. looked interesting. It's been on my wish list for a while. And uh, I was like, I was looking for, I don't know, just looked appealing. They reviewed well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um I think one of the things is that like maybe the deck building isn't that <clears throat> it's kind of linear in the sense that like if you take bleed, get bleed cards kind of thing. So some of the comments on it, it's not that creative mm. where it's like a progression game, but mixing and match is kind of fun. Even Diablo's guilty of that where you know what sets you want or, or whatever. So it feels like you're not doing item science as much when all the roads are well trod. But I like those kinds of games enough that I give it a try anyway. The most helpful review is from Tricky Dick Nixon, uh, ex-president oh, Nixon, yeah. who says, up there with Slay the Spire and Monster Train. Well, that sounds like I'd like it. I like both those games a yeah, lot. Yeah, I think the one turnoff or the reason why I waited is that, like, it's really just a, like, it's really just cards. Yeah. Like, it doesn't have a lot of... It's got art on the cards, but, you know, a lot of these games usually... Like, I uh, like Tainted Grail for that. It has, like, monsters that are gross and cool music. Sure. This looked very much like just cards. Yeah. And so, Grifflands has, like, neat little dudes, monster trains. It's got a train full of demons. This is like... Well, this, <laughs> here's cards. You like yeah. cards? They're just cards. So, I was like, I don't know. But Man, monster train's so good. And that game John played, the demo for their next game. I cannot wait for that. What was that yeah. called? Uh, Light Drifter? Or no, uh, <laughs> Void Monkey? Yeah. Oh, no, I stole them fat. I, since we're talking Ink. about... Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Inkbound. Inkbound, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, high on my list. Can't wait to try that game. Since Sorry. we're talking about card games, though, there's another one that did come out that I was curious about. It's a Yogg's Cast game that Aces and Adventures. Oh, right. I've seen um, that one. I've seen it's it. It's like poker, but adventure. And it did look... So uh, that was the one I actually meant when I said I saw the game and was curious about it and thought, ah, eh, Scott will play this. But <laughs> yeah, I messed up. Uh, it seems like a game I would it. play, for sure. Don't doubt about it. Um, yeah, but Ace of the, yeah, it looked interesting. I wish listed it, too, because I'm like, oh, okay, let's see how this one shakes out. Yeah. It's poker. I mean, you know. Oh my like gosh! Stolen an enemy or something like that. Looks I'm pretty, looking at looks this. Right. The the page crashed on me trying to list all the games I own. I'm not looking this number up. I'm not doing it. It'll scare me. Even even if um, it's. Uh, when did you join Steam? 2004. When well, whenever oh, Half Life Two launched and you had to get it there, that was in. This is like Yoda warning Obi Wan not to watch Anakin kill younglings on the video <laughs> camera. Yeah. Like you're yeah. not gonna see anything good in there. No. Yeah. There's nothing good in there. Avoid that at all costs. You can math it out, but it doesn't change the fact we all saw what Bo's initial reaction was. Yeah. And yes, oh, it was... he's mathed it to a place where he's more content. Sure. But I, he, he still got punched. In and you saw it, right? You saw it in his face. It was like yeah. four yeah. more. It's, and... it's a little higher. I was expecting three to four K lifetime. Yeah. It's you... a, little, it was a little higher than I was thinking. You look scary. You look scared. <laughs> You looked like, oh, geez. but it's time to like. Sometimes you, you like again. Thirteen years having an account, then you're kind of, you know, then you're like, well, and nine hundred dollars a year still sounds like a lot, but you know, I have a good day job right now and you know, make a little change here on the show. It's 
you know, a thousand dollars a year on gaming is actually not. It's bad. one of the cheap. It's as funny as it sounds. It is one of the if you're really hardcore into it. It's one of the cheaper hobbies compared to other. Yeah. Like we yeah. said, golf. And I skiing just, and- I you know. I just thought it would be lower. That's why I was like, <laughs> now that it's happened to me, now you guys can do it. Maybe thinking, oh, is it going to be fifty thousand? And you know, or or like John I, says, I ball don't. It yeah. So that you're like, oh, that's not so bad. Or like John says, don't do it. I'm not doing it. Uh, here comes a call. I got a call. This came to eight zero one four seven one zero four six two, and it's about a game we talked about in demo form. Uh, he has this to say. Hey, this is Jay Z calling for the boys at Core. Whoa, um, I can't promise to have any anus related content like last week's caller, but <laughs> wanted to just chime in um, to confirm your uh, theories about Dark and Darker. I, I logged almost like 13, 14 hours and just like a couple of days of playtime during the test, which will which will have ended at this point by the time you guys record the show. But it's really cool. It's it's escape from Tarkov, but but fantasy. Um, you can go in by yourself or as a duo or as a trio, um, kind of like you guys talked about. I think there's six classes to choose from, but it is hard. Uh, it is unforgiving. I mean, we're talking two, three hits will will kill you. Um, and you can bring people back to life that are on your in your in your little party, but it's it's also difficult. Um, healing is is very sparse, so. Um, definitely not one for the faint of heart, but I think there's really something special going on there. Um, and I would definitely encourage you guys to keep your eye on it and check it out when they ever they do their next, um, you know, public test. So just want to chime in for that. All right. Dark and darker. Yeah. Th- thanks for the providing review. We missed it and I missed it. I had the demo installed and everything. I just missed trying it. So yeah. Heard that crazy things. The video I watched looked insane. Like it, it was, I think it was John who said it looks like jank but in the way you want those experiences to be a little janky like yeah uh, the opposite of toxic jankulinity like what is it Posi- <laughs> yeah positive jankulinity yeah, yeah. or uh, yeah. singaporean what's, what's with the opposite of toxic masculinity like oh um oh boy good that's... positive flourishing? femininity positive femininity well, well no not the masculinity part but if instead of saying toxic masculinity you, you want to encourage flourishing masculinity oh, flourishing. what's the what's the positive uh, what's the opposite of toxic is what you're asking yeah um, when, when you're inspiring masculinity opposite of toxic let's see what the dictionary tells us um here's an antonym non-toxic <laughs> <laughs> well, that nailed that, it uh, man everything we've had to look up today has just been Okay, I like healthy. Healthy. Says healthy. Yeah, masculinity. curative. So this curative is, is healthy good. janculinity. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I think yeah, I'm down with that. Go. All right. Nice good name for the show, too. Just saying. Oh, by the way, this is the uh, Merriam Webster's word of the day accentuate. Accentuate. That's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, put that in your cheese and smoke it. Uh, thank you for the call. If you guys want to call, you can, 801-471-0462. I want to thank some patrons this week. Patreon.com slash core show is where they went. we got a handful of new people since last week. We got Far From Joel. I wonder what that means. I'd like to know more. Chris Alzowski. Al. I used to listen to them in the 80s, Far From Joel. Yeah, Far From Joel. Al, Eric the Red, Abdullah, uh, Less Orchard, which is way be- more better than More Orchard, for real. Like I don't want More Orchard. Mm-hmm. Give me less. And jo- Dojari. Dojari. Whoa. Remember that song? <laughs> Good Lord. No. Isn't that Eric the Red, one of the Lost Vikings? Oh. It's, yeah, I think so. From the Blizzard game? Yeah. Hold on. I'm Googling Dojari. It just wants to autocomplete the Doja Cat. <laughs> Doja Cat. No, yeah, you don't want that. Hold on. Eric the Red. Uh, Eric the Red was... Uh, I mean, I think it's also no. A Eric the Red was a famous Viking, Viking I think. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric. But from from a Blizzard perspective, is he a lost? Why Vikings? would you or... ask? Who are the three Vikings? Lost Vikings. Um. Yeah, I can't find. I'm going to ask Google because I'm not advanced enough to ask an AI. But <laughs> who are the Lost Vikings? I'm going to ask Chat GPT and just see what it says. The Lost Vikings is a puzzle platform game developed by Silicon and Synapse, now known as Blizzard Entertainment, released in 92. Baylock. Oh, Baylog, Eric the Swift, Olaf and Olaf and the Eric Stout. Eric the Swift. Yeah. Oh, he's Eric the Swift, not Eric the Red. So, yeah. not, not the Lost Vikings. This is Norse. Yeah. This is history. Is but Eric the Swift is the Red one. 
Oh, it says here the characters have also appeared in other Blizzard games, which we knew about Heroes of the Storm, but it also says World of Warcraft. How was yeah, that? they're in WoW. Oh, which is like NPCs or something. That's dumb. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. How dare they? It's fine. How dare they? They do it the all audacity the time. The audacity. They do it all the time. putting the Lost Vikings in <laughs> World of Warcraft. <laughs> Uh, well, here's the deal. If you're a brand new or old uh, supporter of our Patreon, you'll never get commercials. You get pre-show content every week, little post-show as well, and monthly benefits you can only get if you go sign up today. That's uh, patreon.com slash core show. Everything else is over at frogpants.com slash core, and uh, we'd love it if you went over there and checked it out. By the way, out. before we go, everyone's got their sticker. I think I'm the last one to get it, but I got you. It showed sticker. up? Awesome. John, yeah. you got yours, Just right? today. Where should I put it? Oh, um, Should I bring it to work and put it there? I'll yeah, put it on something important at work. Uh, the company coffee well, pot. I think it would be deemed if he leaves inappropriate. the job, it would get left behind. And if they fired him I because just, of it, it would also get left behind. I think behind. I would get in trouble because of the pantslessness. I I know it's not salacious. It's a comic drawing, but still. it's. You look like a shopkeeper and it's just like Blade Runner. And all this stuff is like all the other things in your store. Yeah. Like your gifts and oh, things. I have a, I have a question. And that. <laughs> Oh, it just leaves again. It's just, Wait. oh, hold on. He's like, I Show can get you these back. stickers. On my envelope here that I got it, is oh. this Hey Kim or is this Hey yeah, it's just from hey. Kim? From it's like Kim. Hey from Kim. Okay. Yeah. Hey, hey Kim. She, 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 I told you she has. She has I just a, wasn't sure if this was like she was. you were writing a message to her or something like that. Like, hey, Kim. She has a hey, soft Kim, spot. Can you send this to Bo? My wife has a major soft spot for Bo. She, she wants to help him and feed him. And it's weird because... He doesn't need feeding. You're fine. You got you got all the yeah, takeout. I need, need less feeding, honestly. <laughs> she just <laughs> always has this thing. Like, How's Bo doing? I tell about it every time. How's Bo doing? That's her favorite thing to ask. Tonight, she'll ask, how was the show? Oh, it was great. We had a good time. Saw John's baby. Did all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. And she'll go, oh, that's great. How's, how's Bo doing? She'll say. <laughs> she'll do it. I don't know she'll why. Do she will. Right. I'm like, he's fine. He's always fine. Uh, there I you go. She's doing well. Ask her how she's doing. I will. I'll I'll turn it around. I'll flip the lid on this on this deal. Just don't do it Joey style, because then then I'll make a whole awkward thing. Oh hell let's no! Not do that. Yeah, well, let's not yeah. do that. Uh, let's toss the mic over to Grandma. She's going to tell us what we played today, so that people can go home and remember. Grandma, take it. Oh, away. that's right. I guess we got to do this thing again this week. All right, we'll do it quick. Here we go. Yeah. The game Scott played is Arcade Paradise. That's the game where they ripped off his life. Card Crawl Adventure. That's the game John thought was a different game, but it's actually another game that was based on a mobile game, and it's got cards in it, and he played Immortal Phoenix Rising. That's the game that's better than the Zelda game. Please send your emails to Scott. He's the one that said it. John played Sons of the Forest, kind of, but he kind of talked about it, so there was Genshin Impact, Chrono Cross the Radical Dreams Edition, and Hollow Knight, so get your angry emails to him on that because he still doesn't like it. Bo played Diablo 3 for way too long. He played Mighty Doom because he hates himself, and he continued to learn Godot 4 so you can play his game. Good lord. That was amazing. No glitch, <laughs> yeah. no hitch. Yeah, no glitch You're getting better every week. Yeah. You're becoming one. You are fast, grandma. You are fast, Grandma. All right? So embrace it. Live it. Be I that mean, he's thing. A, he's a resident tongue twister master. Yeah, it's really good. Uh, yeah. But I'll tell you what else is good. We'll be back next week. Normal time this next time. Thursday is the plan. We had a couple of Fridays for reasons, schedule reasons. But uh, next week, we'll be back to Thursday. So join us then for whatever uh, stupid stuff happens in the video game industry and hear us go on and on about pelvic floors. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yes. Get more at frogpants.com. Okay, I'm down, your high and mighty majesty. I don't even know where I got that. Hmm. What that was sounds that like an old one? 